Want to speak real English from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at EnglishClass101.com. Hi, everybody. My name is Alicia. Welcome back to Top Words. Today, we're going to talk about 10 ways to stop translating in your head. Let's get started. Identify objects around you in English. The first way to stop translating in your head is to identify the objects around you in your target language. So if you're studying English, that means you look at the objects around the room, look at the things in your life. Don't think of them in your native language first. Think of them in your target language first. So if I look around the room, I see a computer, I shouldn't think my native language word. I should think my target language word. So start with the items and the situations in your everyday life. If I say computer in English, maybe I should say computer in Japanese. I should say not, I don't know, water in English. I should say omizu in Japanese. So start associating the words in your target language with your everyday life now. So if you're studying English, that means start getting familiar with the things in your everyday life in English. Repeat phrases you hear native speakers use. Tip number two is to repeat the phrases that you hear native speakers use. So if you're watching this channel, for example, or you're watching a TV show or a movie, uh, listen for the way that native speakers make those phrases. If you hear a phrase you have never heard before, or you hear an interesting combination of words, try to repeat them yourself. Don't just listen. Try to say them yourself. If you're in a public space and it's difficult for you to do that, fine. Practice in a place where you feel more comfortable. Maybe if you have some private space to practice. Just repeat them. Get your mouth used to saying the words the way that the speakers, uh, the native speakers do. So if you never actually say words, if you're only taking in, if you're only listening and you're not actually producing the language, it's, it's kind of hard to, uh, to practice and to, um, to really hone your pronunciation, to improve your pronunciation. So when you listen to native speakers, try to repeat after them. So for example, if you're studying English, you can try to repeat after this video. You can repeat after the things I'm saying because maybe I'm using an expression or I'm using a certain uh, series of vocabulary words together the way a native speaker would. And it's a, maybe a good idea to try to practice the ways that native speakers put their words together. So try to repeat after native speakers, especially when you're looking at media. Uh, and you can do this when you're reading books, too. You can try to read out, um, read out loud interesting lines of books that you find or something that maybe is difficult for you. Very nice practice tip. Make a situation where you can't escape into your native language. Make a situation where you can't escape into your native language essentially means immerse yourself. Of course, going to that country or going to a place uh, where you can speak only that language is very difficult for some of you. Totally understand. But if in your life you can create a situation in your library, in your room, in your house, somewhere, for just an hour or, I don't know, maybe a day. I don't know what your schedule is like. But if you can create a situation or create an environment where you have no choice but to use that language and you cannot escape, meaning you cannot uh, go back to using your native language as a crutch, you can't use the native language at all, it forces you to use the language that you're studying. So, of course, if you are lucky enough to live in the country or to live in a place where people speak the language you're studying, great. But you have to go out and interact with people. You have to put yourself in a place where you have no choice but to speak. It's very hard and it's very scary and it's very embarrassing at first. But if you take time to find places and to make environments that are comfortable for you, where you feel comfortable making mistakes and asking questions, it's very valuable for your learning process. This is actually something that I did. Totally. I totally did this. My Japanese wasn't very good for a long time. But then I started making friends who could not speak English. Uh, actually, I just did this through finding hobbies. There was a hobby that I had. I joined a group. I joined actually a school to where I could learn how to do that hobby. And everything was taught only in Japanese. 
and the people in my class only spoke Japanese mostly. And then maybe we would go out for drinks and food、uh, late at night or on the weekends, and everybody spoke only Japanese. And if I couldn't communicate even simply in Japanese, I had no hope of keeping that friendship together. So it forced me to study. It forced me to think about the words they were using. Uh, and to try to learn those words, those patterns, as well as how to produce them naturally myself. So I was learning the vocabulary words the people around me were using, and learning how to apply them on my own. That was only possible because I had no escape <laughs> in those situations. So try to do that,、uh, even if you can do it yourself in your house. It's super helpful, I think. Watch TV and movies in your target language without subtitles. Tip number four is to watch TV and movies in your target language without subtitles. Without subtitles, so I think that watching、uh, with subtitles can be very beneficial.、Um, so if I'm watching something, or if you want to watch something with subtitles on, great. But I sometimes find that、uh, I can, in my case, I I think too much about reading the subtitles and I forget to listen. So maybe if you've seen a movie in your target language a few times、um, with the subtitles on, try turning the subtitles off and think about the like characters' body language, the words they're using.、Um, you can always look that up later. Look up the you know the words you don't know in a dictionary, but try to do it、um, where you're focusing completely. On the way that people are using their words, try not to use the subtitles. So,、um, kind of play around with it a little bit. If there's a word that's difficult for you to hear, you can actually turn on the subtitles in, like the in the native、uh, language of the movie as well. That's something that I've done. Like if,、uh, like if I wanted to study Japanese, it's very useful when the actual words spoken in Japanese appear on the screen. Sometimes it's easier for me to catch a word. If I see it visually and I hear it at the same time, so another way to kind of、um, explore how you can use TV and movies is to actually turn on the closed captions, like the the、um, the words on the screen in the native language of the movie. So,、uh, so this is sort of two points in one. So one, watch movies without subtitles. Meaning subtitles in your native language. And hint two is to watch movies、um, with closed captioning on, but the closed captioning is in your target language, not in your native language. So you can try those two things with TV and with、um, movies. Don't bring a dictionary to your lesson. Tip number five is don't bring a dictionary to your lesson. Okay, so.、Uh, Give me a second here. So I understand that dictionaries, especially electronic dictionaries, we have them on our phones now, are very, very convenient.、Um, of course, it's important to use them, and it's they're a great resource to have. However, one thing that、uh, really bothers me and that I think is detrimental, it's not helpful for students, is when、uh, students are in a lesson and they're practicing conversation and they. Reach a point in the conversation where they don't know the word they want to use. They know it in their native language, and they don't know how to say it in their target language. They pull out their dictionary. They say to the the person listening to them, their practice partner in their lesson, where they have a limited period of time, just a moment, and then they look it up on their phone. And it takes a few seconds. The, the flow of the conversation stops, and then they say a word. <laughs> and it's like, whoa, no, that's not. You don't have that ability. You don't have the ability to do that in a conversation with a native speaker. Most people, like, if you go to a bank and try to open a bank account, are you really going to pull out your dictionary and sit there and try to communicate? You know, just a moment, just a moment. As you look up each word, you don't know. No, or if you do, that's not a real conversation. So instead, try using a different strategy. By that I mean, if you find a word you don't know in conversation, explain the word to your conversation partner. Maybe they know the word. If you're speaking with a native speaker, this is a chance for them to teach you a word. I find that when people take the time to teach me a word, I remember the word much better than just looking it up on my dictionary. So try to resist. Maybe you can bring a dictionary to your lesson, but don't use it, or try not to use it 
in your conversation practice. It's just, it destroys the flow of a conversation. So instead, practice the skill of describing the vocabulary word you want to use and learn how to ask the meaning of a word or learn how to ask for a vocabulary word from your partner. So you can use an expression like, ah, what's the word that means blah, blah, blah. Or, um, you know, it's this thing that does this and this and this. So this is an opportunity for you to describe characteristics of something or find a different way. You can use your body language. You can use whatever. You have a lot of tools, but try not to use a dictionary in a conversation because it's not realistic. Train responses to common questions. Number six is a quick one, I think. Number six, hint number six I have is just to train responses to common questions. Train responses to common questions. So, for example, uh, a very common question in English is, hey, how are you? You should know how to answer this question. Just have a default response. Hey, how are you? I'm good. <laughs> like, if it takes you a long time to answer the question, hey, how are you? You need to practice. I think that's a pretty good, uh, a pretty good indicator. So, for example, sometimes I ask students a question like that they, they haven't quite gotten the idea of how to respond just yet. They, they, they're not so quick at responding. I say, uh, hey, how are you? And they say, yes. And then they think and they go, I'm, uh, I'm uh, good. <laughs> and it's like, that's a very common question. So think about just a default response that you can spit out, that you can quickly say. If it's, how was your weekend? Or, hey, what's up? Or, what do you want to do for dinner tonight? Think about, like, just a handful, meaning just a few, responses to those questions and train them quickly. Just, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm okay. How are you? Not bad. There's three. So it's just training responses to those questions. There's no reason to be surprised by a question like, how are you? Like, that's a very common question. So for those common questions, train responses to that. We've got a bunch of videos, especially beginner level videos for some example responses you can do. So don't get stuck with these little questions. Just train a few responses. Practice a few responses till they feel natural to you. It'll save you time and it'll help the person asking the question too to move forward in the conversation. Yay! Study with materials that don't provide a translation. The next tip is to study with materials that don't provide a translation. So by this I mean if you're using worksheets and, or some kind of textbook uh, or whatever, and it has your target language, the language you're studying, and it has your native language next to it. While this can be useful, I feel that if you can, studying your materials only in your target language and then simplified explanations for more detailed points also in your target language can be a little bit better. So I, sh I don't want to say like you should only study things in your target language and nothing from your native language because of course like it's, it can be helpful sometimes to look up a word or to understand a grammar point in your native language. But where possible, if you can find something that provides simplified explanations in your target language, it can be really, really helpful because, again, you're thinking, you're learning to think on like a simpler, on a more basic level about the language you're studying in the language that you're studying. So this can be really, really good. So finding some materials to use where there's no translation. Maybe you can practice, um, of course, with, with books and with written materials, but also with like video materials as well. So there are a variety of different ways that you can um, find materials in your target language, um, like in video and TV. So some things to think about there are the level of vocabulary words people are using in the media content you're watching, um, who the media content is intended for, children, young adults, adults, uh, the speed at which the speaker is talking. So like I have the ability to change the level of difficulty of uh, videos based on the rate of speech, the vocabulary words that I use, and how many like idioms and things I use. So I could make a video very difficult. We could make a very, like a very difficult video series by leveling up our vocabulary use or by speaking very quickly. 
Or, as you might see in like our English in three minutes series,、um, we can also use very simple vocabulary and speak at a low rate of speech. So maybe right now this is a very intermediate level video. So please think about that. So not just for、um, written materials, but also for your audio and visual materials. Think about、um, who your audience is, the level of the material, and so on. It can be really fun. Uh, and it can be helpful to think about、um, your your target language in your target language. All right, we're almost done. Study phrases in addition to single vocabulary. The next tip is study phrases in addition to single vocabulary words. So yes, of course, vocabulary is important, but I find it personally very very useful to look at how a vocabulary word is used in a phrase. Because sometimes using it in a phrase helps you understand the nuance of that vocabulary word really, really well. So if I like a word like crazy, for example, in English, depending on the situation where the word crazy is used, it could mean something different. It could mean like a person who is mentally confused or mixed up. It could also mean something really good. It could mean something really bad. So, if we look only at the word "crazy," it's quite difficult to understand really the meaning of the word. But if you look at the way the word is used in a phrase, you can get a lot more information. So, take a look at the way people use words in phrases, not just as single vocabulary words. You can learn a lot more that way. I think. Do your daily activities in English where possible. The next tip is to do your daily activities in your target language.、Uh, so, if you're studying English, that means try to do some daily activities in English if possible. So, this can be very, very boring stuff, but just think about it when you're doing the activity. So, like right now, I'm filming a video for EnglishClass101.com, or I'm going to work, I'm cooking breakfast, I'm doing the laundry. What do I have to do tomorrow? So. Try thinking about your everyday life in English if you're studying English. Try thinking about your everyday activities, the people that you meet. What are you doing? So this is a way to help you practice your verbs. So if you don't know, if you're I don't know, you're doing something at work and you're like, oh my gosh, how do I explain the what's the verb for you know a picture? Like I want to blah 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 a picture. What's the word? You can check a dictionary at that point and go, ah,、oh, it's draw. I I need to use the verb draw for draw a picture. So you can find these little gaps in your everyday life, these little gaps in your knowledge, if you think about、um, your everyday activities in your target language. If you don't think about it in your target language, you might not realize you have vocabulary gaps or phrase gaps here and there. So this is a really good and kind of funny actually way to study. Use a learner's dictionary for new words. The last tip is to use a learner's dictionary for new words. So in English, there are learner's dictionaries available in English. So、uh, my favorite, my personal favorite, is Merriam-Webster. Merriam-Webster is a fantastic dictionary resource. They're so interesting, and they have tons of like historical information. I really do just sit and like read things on the dictionary page lately. It's true, but.、Um, Of course, there's a definition. There's a meaning for words. There are example sentences for words. But Merriam-Webster also has what's called a learner's dictionary. If you find a word that you don't recognize, you can check it at,、uh, in a dictionary, in a learner's dictionary, and it gives you a simplified, a simple explanation in simple English. Of that word, so instead of checking it in your native language, you can check it in your target language. So again, this helps you to understand the word、um, that you are that you're focused on, but you understand it from、um, the language you're studying, not from your native language. So using a learner's dictionary can be really, really useful as well. All right. So those are ten tips. Those are ten tips to help you stop translating in your head. I know it's very difficult, but it's it takes time and it takes practice. And I hope that these are a few strategies that can help you as you study、uh, any language. Of course, this is an English language channel, an English language learning channel. But I think these tips are pretty good for learning just about any language, really. So I hope those are useful for you. If you have tried these strategies, or if you have any other comments or other tips, please let us 
know in the comments section below this video. If you liked this video, please make sure to hit the thumbs up, share this video, and subscribe to our channel too. Check us out at EnglishClass101.com for more good stuff as well. Thanks very much for watching this episode of Top Words, and I will see you again soon. Bye! Hi everyone, I'm Bridget, and welcome to today's lesson. Today's topic is 10 ways to say hello in English. Good morning. Good morning is the first thing you say to someone when you see them in the morning. Good morning, sir. Would you like a cup of coffee? Good morning. Could I please get some orange juice? Good morning. I'm still tired from the night before. Hello. Hello is the most common greeting you'll hear. That and hi. Hello is a polite, nice way to greet someone when you see them. Hello. Everyone says it. You cannot go wrong saying hello. Hello can be used at any time of the day, no matter whether it's morning or at night or at 4 a.m. When you see someone, you can say hello and it will still be appropriate. Long time no see. Long time no see. It's not necessarily grammatically correct, but it's a saying that we have. Hey, long time no see. What it means is that you haven't seen that person in a long time. So it literally means long time no see. Long time no see is something you say to someone when you haven't seen them in a while. Hey, John. Long time no see. How are the wife and kids? How have you been? Hey, how have you been? I haven't seen you in a long time. How have you been is asking someone how they're doing and how they've been for the past however long if you haven't seen them in a while. You might say, hey, long time no see. How have you been? How have you been? That's past tense. It implies that you haven't seen them in a while and you want to hear about how they are and how they've been for all of that time that you haven't seen them. Hey, long time no see. How have you been? How are you? How are you? Means how are you doing? How are you feeling? How is everything? It's a standard thing that you might say to anyone, even if you've seen them the day before. You might see them today and say, hey, how are you? How's it going? Hey, how's it going? How's it going is a more informal way to say, how are you? So, how are you and how's it going, they mean the same thing. It's asking how you are doing, how you are feeling. Is everything okay with you? What's up? What's up is another way of saying, hey, how's it going? But this one is even more informal. So, you might say this to friends. Hey, what's up? And they'll say, nothing. Just living my life, you know, day in and day out. Hey, what's up? Hey, what's up? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. How are you? Would you like some lunch? Good afternoon is a polite way to greet someone in the afternoon. So if you run into your boss, you might say, good afternoon. It's very nice. It's polite. Not a lot of people say it to their friends, but it's, it's a polite way to greet someone. Good evening. Good evening is a nice way to greet someone in the evening time. You can only use this phrase in the evening because it's wishing someone a good evening. It's saying hello at a certain time of day. Good evening. Would you like some dinner? Good evening. Have you eaten yet? All of my examples involve food, it seems. It's nice to meet you. It's nice to meet you. This is something that's very common to say the first time that you meet someone. You might shake their hand and say, Hi, it's nice to meet you. My name is Bridget. My name is... It's telling that person that you are happy to be meeting them. It's a pleasure to meet them. Hi, it's nice to meet you. That brings us to the end of this lesson, 10 ways to say hello. If you guys liked the video, please don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. And don't forget to go to EnglishClass101.com for more English.
Okay, everybody. Shift information has been posted for the month. It looks like we'll visit 25 cities in 30 days. Do we normally visit 25 different cities in one month? Yes. Sometimes we visit even more. Where's our first stop? Charlotte. Hey, I have friends in Charlotte. It would be nice to see them. Good evening, in-room dining. This is Alex. How may I be of service? Hello, I would like to order some food. Of course, ma'am. Just to confirm, this is Mrs. Rawson in room 417? Yes, it is. Excellent. May I take your order? Yes, I would like a turkey sandwich on a Parmesan bagel. And what to drink? A Diet Coke. Will there be anything else? Yes, I would also like a wake-up call for seven. My major is education. How about you? I'm an English major. Cool. I like English. Oh, and what's Oksana's major? She's also an English major. That's nice. You can help each other study. Yep. In fact, I need to meet her now so we can study together. Okay. It was nice talking with you. You too. See you later. See ya. Good evening, ma'am. May I have your first and last names? Melissa West. Thank you, ma'am. I have found your reservation. Here's the registration information. Does everything look correct to you? Yes, it seems to be correct. Excellent. Now, I will just need a photo ID for legal purposes. Will my passport do? That would be just fine, ma'am. Checkout is between noon and two o'clock. You may request an extension of up to five hours free of charge. What if I need more time? Then a late charge of 5% will be added to your bill. Hey, Vicky, did you forget our study date at 10 this morning? I'm sorry, Naomi. At 10, I was talking with my professor and couldn't get away. I'm sorry. I should have called. That's okay. So, how did the meeting go with the professor? It went fine. He gave me an extension on my paper and I can still take the midterm. How was your study group yesterday? Well, we were studying together during lunch when I noticed an old friend of mine from high school in the same cafe. My concentration quickly switched from class to catching up with my friend, so I didn't get much done. You've taken that class before, right? Yeah, last semester. I was always asking questions in that class because it was so difficult. Well, I was hoping that you could lend me a hand with my paper. I can't think of anything else to write. Sure, no problem. That is, if you can help me study for our history test. Sounds like a deal. Want to speak real English from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at EnglishClass101.com. Hi everyone, I'm Christine from EnglishClass101.com. In this video, we'll be talking about how to curse like an English native speaker. Piss, a slang term for urine. For example, don't piss your pants. You can say this when you're really scared or anxious. For example, if you're about to go on stage to make a speech or perform, someone can say, don't piss your pants. You can do it. Pissed off, to be really angry. When I'm angry, I can say, hey, I'm really pissed off at you right now. Why did you do that for? Loser, used to describe an uncool person. In high school, my friends and I would use this a lot and we would say, hey loser, how's it going? Idiot, used to insult people by saying they're not intelligent. Of all the mean things that you can say, this is on the lighter side, but people still use it. Shoot, this is used to show disappointment or frustration without using a stronger curse word. Shoot, I spilled my coffee. Shut up. You can use this when you want them to be quiet or there's something surprising that you just heard. You can say, shut up, no way. Ticked off to be really angry. You can say this with pissed off. So this is actually an older term. Not many people use this. 
as much anymore because most people actually just use pissed off. Fool. This is similar to saying someone is like a clown. You can say, you're acting like a fool right now. <gasps> Jerk. This is a light insult used to describe someone who is mean. For example, if there's someone bullying another person, that person is being a jerk. Wimp. This means someone who isn't strong. There is a movie out right now called Diary of a Wimpy Kid. Have you seen it? Have you not? I haven't yet. So how was it? If you have any more questions, please leave a comment below. See you next time. Hey everyone, I'm Paris from EnglishClass101.com. In this video, we're talking about how to ask and give directions. Let's start. To the left, to the left. The first phrase is, where is the? Where is the? For example, you can ask, where is the bank? This can be used to ask for a general location or detailed directions. Don't be surprised if you only receive basic information. For example, next to the grocery store. The next phrase is, I need to go to the, I need to go to the. For example, you can say, I need to go to the police station. The word need is used, but this is used for non-emergencies as well. How do I get to the, how do I get to the? For example, you can say, how do I get to the museum? This question can be used to ask for step-by-step -step directions instead of a general location. Is the near here? Is the near here, for example, you can say, is the library near here? If you're unfamiliar with an area, you can ask to get this information about a specific place where you want to go. Is the bathroom near here? Excuse me, do you know where the is? Excuse me, do you know where the is? For example, you can say, excuse me, do you know where the park is? Only use excuse me when you're starting a conversation with a stranger. Another common phrase is, is the far from here? Is the far from here? For example, you can say, is the post office far from here? This is an indirect way to ask for directions. People will tell you how far the place is and probably tell you the best way to get there. Walking, taking a bus, driving, Uber. Now let's take a look at expressions to give directions. Turn left, turn left. For example, you can say, turn left after two blocks. This gives you information about how far you should go before you make any changes. In this case, you should go left. To the left, to the left. Turn right, turn right. For example, you can say, turn right at the third traffic light. This also gives you information about how far you should go before taking another action. In this case, you should go right. Go straight. Go straight. This simply tells you to go in one direction. It also implies that if you keep going straight, that you will eventually find what you're looking for. Go past. Go past. For example, you can say, go past the church. A landmark is just an easily noticeable place. For example, a movie, theater, restaurant. At the corner of. At the corner of. For example, you can say, it's at the corner of. This means that a place is located at the corner where two streets meet. In front of. In front of. For example, you can say, the bus station is in front of the supermarket. We use front to refer to the main entrance of a building. It can also mean visible from the front and doesn't necessarily mean it's directly in front of something. Behind. Behind. For example, you can say the parking lot is behind the movie theater. We use behind to say that something is at the rear of a building. The front of a building is its main entrance, so which side it's facing the street is really not important. Next to. Next to. For example, you can say the restaurant is next to the park. This is an example of using a non-specific location to give general directions. Next to can be anywhere beside, in front of, or around a place. McDonald's is next to my house. Between. Between. For example, you can say, the store is between the coffee shop and the pet store. Between is used with two other places. 
When using between, the main place will always be in the middle of the two other places. Okay, that's all for this lesson. Which phrase do you like the most? Leave us a comment and let us know. And I'll see you next time, guys. Bye. Hey guys, I'm Paris from EnglishClass101.com. In this video, we'll be talking about making complaints in English. So let's get started. The first complaint is, I'm starving. I'm starving. This is an exaggeration you can use when you're hungry. I am always starving, even right now. The next complaint is, it's noisy. It's noisy. This kind of complaint is one that you would make to a friend. Telling the staff of a restaurant won't help since they can't tell people to be quiet. I hate when it's noisy in restaurants. Save that for another time. Then we have, it's hot. It's hot. This can be used to talk about the weather or the temperature of a room. You can add a request like, can you turn on the air conditioner? I am never hot, so I like that. The next complaint is, it's cold. It's cold. This can be used to talk about the weather or the temperature of a room. You can add a request like, can you turn on the heater? I always make this request because it's always too cold everywhere, everywhere. It's too expensive. It's too expensive. Even if you have enough money to buy something, it may be more money than you want to spend. It would probably be considered rude to say this to someone who works at a store, but I always think, okay, I'm in Gucci, it's way too expensive. <sighs> Another common complaint is, I'm tired. I'm tired. Use this complaint to imply that you want to sit down, relax, go home, take a break. When I babysit my five-year-old cousin, I leave thinking, I'm tired. <sighs> the next complaint is, I gained weight. I gained weight. This is a self-criticism that implies that you want to lose weight. Many people say, I got so fat. <sighs> I'm always broke. I'm always broke. Use this to complain about never having enough money. I am always broke because I always want more money. <sighs> the next complaint is, my job is boring. My job is boring. This is a really common complaint used by people who don't think their jobs are very exciting. Usually it means that you want to find a different, more fun job. It's all right, teachers, your job isn't boring. That person stinks. That person stinks. You can use stinks to talk about a literal physical smell or a general insult meaning that you don't like how someone smells. I hate when people smell on the bus. Not good, not okay. The next complaint is there's too much traffic. There's too much traffic. This is a common complaint among people who commute to work by car. Certain roads are especially bad during rush hour, which is the time in the morning or night most people are going home or to work. If I left at, it was 7 p.m., I would be here in 10 minutes. But because it's daytime in LA, it took me 30 minutes to get here, and I drive really, really fast. <laughs> and it still took me 30 minutes. The next complaint is, the Wi-Fi here is too slow. The Wi-Fi here is too slow. This is just a general complaint you may have about the internet speed. If you're at a cafe or somewhere with Wi-Fi, you can request that they reset the Wi-Fi to improve the speed. If you're having a party and you're having friends over and your Wi-Fi is too slow, you might as well end that party now. No Wi-Fi, no party. My boss is annoying. My boss is annoying. Annoying can be used to mean that someone does things that you don't like or they ask you to do things that you don't like. Either way, an annoying boss is a bad experience. I am very familiar with this. Hey Paris, grab me coffee. Hey Paris, check my emails. My boss is annoying. But don't tell him I said that. The pay is too low. The pay is too low. You can use this to complain about how much you make or to reject a job offer because it doesn't pay enough. I'm a surgeon. The pay is too low. I don't like it. I don't like it. This is a very general complaint that can be used for almost anything. What don't I like? <laughs> Posting a thousand selfies on Instagram. I don't like it. Mm -mm. Okay, that's it for this lesson. Which complaint do you like more? Leave us a comment and let me know. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.
You just got a text message from your hotel's pickup service. What does the first number refer to? What does the first number refer to? The number in the text message refers to the customer code. You are at a train station where you've just bought an express ticket. Which train car row and seat number are you in? Which train car row and seat number are you in? The ticket says that you're in train car number one in the eighth row in seat C. You are at a train station where you're attempting to buy an express ticket from a ticket machine. Which option should you choose to buy an express ticket? Which option should you choose to buy an express ticket? The option on the bottom left is for an express ticket. You are on a platform at a train station where you're waiting for your train. Suddenly, a message appears on the display. What does the message on the display mean? What does the message on the display mean? The display reads, the next train will not stop. You are at a train station where you're reading the train schedule for an express ticket that you've just bought. On which days are there no express trains running? On which days are there no express trains running? There are no express trains running on public holidays and the third Sunday of every month. Want to speak real English from your first lesson? 
Sign up for your free lifetime account at EnglishClass101.com. You are on a platform at a train station where you're waiting for your train. Suddenly, a message appears on the display. What does the message on the display mean? What does the message on the display mean? The display reads, the next train will not stop. You are at a train station where you're looking for the best exit to catch a taxi. Which exit should you take to get to the taxi stop? Which exit should you take to get to the taxi stop? You should take the east exit in order to get to the taxi stop. Hi everybody, my name is Alicia and today I am joined again in the studio by... Michael, hello. And today we're going to be talking about things that were cool in the 90s. So things that were interesting or things that maybe we were interested in in the 90s. I'm guessing that we're going to have some very different opinions uh, based on our experiences of the 90s. So let's get right into it. Michael, your first item, please. Um, okay. Boy bands. So I remember boy bands were very, very popular uh, when I was a kid in the 90s. I had three older brothers who would punch me and tell me, boy bands are for girls, don't like boy bands. Um, so that was my experience with them. And they became kind of uncool, I feel like, after the 90s. And then they never were uncool in like Korea and like a lot of Asian countries. They still had like a strong boy band mm -hmm. kind of uh, scene or whatever. Men but bands now. Is that really what they're called? No, I don't know. I just mean, I think, I feel like boy, there are boy bands. That are now becoming boys to men. Maybe that's the... <laughs> So, I mean, now they it came, <laughs> now it came back. Like, uh, what is the, uh, what's the British one? Now it's kind of cool again. Oh, One Direction. One Direction, yeah. So I think it's come back. It's full circle. Um, Didn't they just break up? I'm gonna go with something that I loved in the '90s. This is probably way too specific, uh, probably. But it's this show called Doug that was on Nickelodeon, and there weren't a whole lot of episodes of Doug. It was, I don't know, like 20 or 30, I feel like. Not even that many. Did you many. ever see this show? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's very nostalgic for me. I don't... 20, 30 episodes? I, I, feel, I feel like I had, I'd seen them all, so I, 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 I know that I saw them all mm -hmm. because they, it would come back, it would come on one day after school, and I'd be like, oh, I've seen this episode. Mm -hmm. But the whole, the whole idea with Doug is Doug was like this, just this plain kid. And he had an older sister, he went to school, he had a dog, he had a best friend, and he would just encounter these everyday life scenarios that would be kind of troubling or he wouldn't know how to deal with them. But like he was kind of a role model, I feel like. He was kind of being like a good kid. Mm -hmm. um, or sometimes he would get into trouble, but then, you know, eventually he would solve the problem or he'd find a way out of it. So, mm -hmm. but I really loved that show. I really loved Nickelodeon in general um, during the 90s. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. Did you watch that channel? Yeah, of course. I loved Nickelodeon. Um, I think it was more like Fox, stuff like that. But I guess I'll segue into another one of mine. Mm -hmm. You're talking about wholesome. So something that's my childhood, I was raised on TV, was sitcoms. Yeah. So I think this has kind of died down, again, like the boy bands, where it, it, people think it's cheesy. Now it's all reality TV shows, that kind of stuff. But that is that is my childhood right there, is you know Full House and these kinds of shows, step by step, mm -hmm. where there's a moral at the end of the story. And right. so everyone, there's always kind of like, the, the protagonist is always like, maybe he's unsure, but by the end, they know the right thing to do, and they play like the violin, kind of sad, not quite sad, but like, 
heartwarming music, and yeah. then they're like, well, and then they give a speech. And as a kid, you know, That's you don't right. really like think about it, but that gets into your like I I whew, man deep because of Full House. If you lie, I've learned this. It's deep in my subconscious. If you lie, and then you keep lying, it snowballs. And it gets worse and worse and worse. So it's best to just right away tell the truth. That was a r- really common theme in most sitcoms, I think. That, like, they're just trying to teach kids don't lie, it's bad. Yeah, you're right, you're right. Mm-hmm. Sitcoms are huge. And by the way, sitcoms um, is, um, is a portmanteau, portmanteau meaning two words put together, of situation and comedy. So situation and comedy equals sitcom in this case. Okay, <laughs> nice, nice. Um, I'm going to go to my next one. Um, let's see. I think probably every little girl in the 90s, in America anyway, knew what this was. I don't know if you knew. Um, it's this brand called Lisa Frank. Um, Lisa Frank. Are you aware of Lisa Frank? Are you aware of Lisa Frank? No? Okay. She knows. (laughs) She knows who Lisa Frank is. (laughs) So Lisa Frank is, um, just bright. It was always like brightly colored school supplies. Uh, like pinks and purples and blues, and it would always have unicorns and dolphins and mystical creatures. It was just bright, and everybody, all the girls loved it. I loved it. I had Lisa Frank, just whatever I could get my hands on. It'd be pencils or erasers or just pinks and rainbows and hearts and stuff like that. So I think every every girl who grew up in the 90s knows what Lisa Frank is. Ah, okay. So talking about style and whatnot... Grunge. Grunge is something that I, that hits close to home for me and I think a, that came out of the 90s is, um, I mean, everybody knows around the world, I think most people know Nirvana, yeah. uh, Kurt Cobain. Yeah. And this is something that I guess was brought to the world from Seattle and it was a music genre and it was kind of, it's like rock, but sometimes slower, almost emo, kind of like sad, usually undertones. But anyways, the style that came with it was the opposite of like the 80s and, and early 90s of really bright colors. You know, it was the opposite. You just wear holy jeans. You don't really shower that much. You don't shave and like plaid and just really like dreary colors. Mm-hmm. So that was really popular. I, at least I remember in like the yeah, early 90s, like mid 90s. Yeah. Nir- I, and it's, as soon as I saw that card grunge, I was like, Oh, Nirvana. That was, that's the first thing that comes to mind when I hear about, when I hear grunge. Mm. I didn't get into the grunge scene though. I was I was busy with boy bands, but like <laughs> grunge for me was never really. I was aware. I was aware of Nirvana, but I did not. I was not of the Nirvana mm. pod. Okay, I'm gonna go to a style point then too because you've brought up a style point. I'll put up, bring up maybe um, a female style point. Scrunchies, uh, still popular perhaps among some people. What is a scrunchie? A scrunchie. Let's see. I don't have a. Um, so there's regular rubber bands that you can use to tie back long hair. He's making an O okay. shape with his hands. Yes, <laughs> this is very descriptive. Very descriptive, Michael. Thank so, you. So no, you. For that. I'm the prop, and then you go like this. Digga 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 digga. There's like the. I bet. I bet. I bet. There's an awesome video team somewhere in the somewhere that can put mm. like a scrunchie like right here. <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah, a scrunchie is just a, it's just a, a a piece of elastic with some kind of colorful cloth wrapped around it, and it but when not in use, it would go and it would scrunch. I think I think this is why we call it a scrunchie. <laughs> but then when you pull on it, you could expand it a bit and wrap your hair up in it, and then when you were finished doing that, it would kind of close around it. Um, I had a couple. Nintendo, um, anything, any game related stuff. I remember Game Boys, anything handheld. Um, except when I was a kid, it, it wasn't like this fancy 3D, high, you know, highly like vibrant colors. Mm-hmm. It was like black and white and like you'd play it in the car and you had to squint and it hurts your head, you know, if you're playing too much or getting like car sick and you're like, you can barely see Mario. Are you That's talking about Game Boy? Game Boy. Uh, or any, like there was handheld too. There was like Atari and stuff like that and like Sega. Sega was pretty good. That would light up. I was thinking about NES when you said Nintendo. I imagined mm. my NES. The one that like when it wasn't working correctly, you could just pull the cassette out and be like, <laughs> and put it back in. So you put the cartridge in here, right? And sometimes if it was really stubborn and it didn't work, you would blow into this part. <laughs> And you try, and it really doesn't make a difference. But you would take turns. Like, me and my brothers would be like, no, you want to be the one to get it to work. So you take turns. You're like, no, 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 let me, let me, let me. And just by luck, it would work. And you're like, see, see, yeah. No, this is super nostalgic. I love Nintendo. I have a game, too. Pogs. Do you have Pogs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Pogs are 
either are simultaneously the most brilliant game and the stupidest game ever invented. They're just discs of cardboard about this size. Uh, <clears throat> and on one side, there's a picture. And on the other side, there's just nothing. And then you had a, a thing called a slammer, which was essentially just a heavy pog uh, <laughs> that you would use. And you had to flip, you had to use the slammer to flip the... I get Plain that. cardboard ones? What? I don't even know. It, it was that stupid and forgettable of a game, but it was like crazy. When I was about, I don't know, like second or third grade or something, everybody had pogs. Like mm. we had pog gym days at my school. I remember this Our vividly. Kids, like, America, we're really obese. Us. Let's go into the gym and sit there and smash cardboard. <laughs> that, that'll <laughs> solve the problem. We played pogs. <laughs> and like I was, telling, I was telling her before we started this, like one day like my mom wanted me to get a haircut and I was just being stubborn and I wasn't having it. I was in the mall. I was like, I don't want to get a haircut. She's like, I'll buy you pogs. <laughs> <laughs> and she did. <laughs> it was like this giant tube of pogs, and I was just so thrilled, and I agreed to get my hair cut. Well, that was a lot of things that, was, that were exciting and or popular and or we were into in the 90s. What were you into in the 90s? What was popular in your country? I really have no idea what was popular around the world uh, at that time. Maybe some of these things are similar. Please let us know in the comments. I'm very interested to find out. We read these, by the way. Um, any thoughts? Any other any closing thoughts about the 90s? You're not going to sing a song for us? No mm, boy band bop, songs? Mm, bop, mm, bop. That oh, that's copyright. We can't do that. Just like blur that all out. No, that was that was very accurate. So I'm sure we can use that. <laughs> and perfect. by very Tone accurate, perfect. I mean totally wrong. <laughs> Clearly, we're very good at talking about the '90s. Okay, but uh, we hope that you are too. We hope that you learned something exciting about the '90s. Um, that's all for us today. Thanks very much for watching, and we will see you again soon. Bye. Hi, everybody. My name is Alicia, and I'm joined again in the studio by Michael. Hello. And today we're going to be talking about English conversation strategies. So let's get right into it. Let's start with Michael. What is your first strategy for keeping an English conversation going? This is very important. Don't say, I'm fine, thank you, and you. You hear this all the time from second language English learners or non-native speakers. You learn this, it's one of the first things you learn in an English class. It's mm -hmm. easy, it's good, it's basic, it's foundation. Okay, that's fine. But as soon as you can, switch it up. Because to me, when I meet a foreigner and they come up, and if they say, hey, how are you? I say, oh, I'm fine, you know, I'm good, whatever. How about you? And they say, I'm fine, thank you, and you. And it's just, it's almost robotic because I've said it so many times. And when I hear that, I think, ah, their English isn't that good. Mm. And inside, I'm just going to be really polite and say hello and talk slowly and try to get out of there as quick as I can. So really impress the foreigner, in my opinion. I think the best way to do it is say something, you know, Use a big word or just like a slang word, something like that. When I hear that, I go, wow, man, I want to know what this person thinks. I want to get their point of view, and I'm really excited. And then I've had great conversations because of that. Um, yeah, mm. that's a really, really good one. And actually, I think on this YouTube channel, actually, from a couple years ago, there's a video all about better answers to the question, how are you, than I'm fine, thank you, and you. Or if someone says, hey, how are you? I'm good. You? Or... Fine, you, never, I'm fine, thank you, and you, never. But try to actually use, you know, a phrase that a native speaker would use, and then that's a clue to the native speaker that, oh, maybe this person is ready for a conversation beyond, you know, basic English. So that's a really good point. I like that. I didn't think of things not to do. I only thought of things to do. So, okay, cool. Um, let's see. Let's go to my first one. Um, oh, oh, oh. So, um, the strategy in general is just ask the other person a question. Uh, I think, and I'm guilty of this too when I'm learning another language, I tend to only get input. Like somebody else is always asking me the questions and then I forget myself to ask the other person a question. So one question that I like to ask or, you know, a variation, any kind of WH question is good, like a who question, what, where. Um, something like this, if you've been paying attention, you can use anyway to transition in your conversation. This was in a previous video. You can ask something like anyway up to anything fun this weekend. This is a pretty casual conversational question that you can ask just about anybody, um, whether you've just met them or whether you've known them for a while. But just, just get in the habit of asking other people the question. Don't wait for someone else to ask you the question. Um, so that, that's one strategy that I try to use to keep things going. 
Yeah, me too. I agree. And I'm going to say same Z's because actually two of my questions were exactly what you said. Agree 100%. This is kind of cheating. These should be one, but so always ask questions. Mm -hmm. So, you know, again, you forget. It's really easy. I'm really guilty of this. Mm. English, non English, whatever. I'm, I'm guilty of this. Um, and the other thing is ask deep, open ended questions. So if you ask a yes or no question, so again, like Alicia was saying, it, it just dead ends. Mm. You can't just say, you know, do you like cheese? Yes or no, right? So you want to say, what do you think about cheese? What is your favorite kind? And kind of open it up to something else and let it, let it just kind of snowball. Right, um, right. Yeah, yeah. I, think, I think that that's, that's really a key. Like I have another variation on it, which I guess I'll just continue on to because it kind of relates to what you're talking about. Like he's saying, always ask questions, always ask deep, open-ended questions. So like you, may, you just said, don't ask a yes or no question because yes or no ends with the yes or the no. So one of the things that I'll do is um, use a pattern similar to this, like, hey, did you see or hey, did you hear about blah, blah, blah. So you can use this little blah, blah, blah as your, uh, you can ask about the news. Uh, you can ask about something funny you saw on the internet. You can ask about, um, you know, some something that you heard from another friend of yours, whatever. Uh, it's just a way to check in with the other person and say, oh, did you also experience this thing that I experienced? Let's talk about that. So that might be another question that you can use with people. I like that one. I really like that one because you got to stay within people's comfort zone. So maybe you ask and maybe they don't want to, right? So a good thing is, did you hear about it? That's up to them. Maybe they don't want to talk about it. They can say, oh, yeah, I heard about that. And you can kind of feel uh, the, the atmosphere and, and realize, eh, maybe I shouldn't talk about this, change the subject. Or they get passionate and they start talking about it. And there you go. And just let it go. Um, yeah, absolutely. Mm. One thing, again, I'm guilty of is, is you do got to keep, keep returning it. Right. Don't let it. Don't just say, "Oh yeah." And what I think about that. Da, 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 da. Bring it back. Ask them. What about you? Mm. Uh, that's that's a common thing I forget about. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, good. I have one more. This one. Um, use when you see fit. Don't. I guess. Just. Okay. I'll just introduce it. Compliment the other person or compliment the other person. This can be a nice strategy just to show that you're enjoying the other person's company. Um, it can be as simple as, oh, I like your shirt today, or oh, that's a nice dress you're wearing today, or oh, did you get a new haircut that looks good on you? Something like that. So this is a nice, a nice way to make the other person maybe want to spend more time with you, I think. Yeah, I agree 100%. Um, two things. One, I think it's a good conversation starter sometimes. Um, if you got to be careful. With a stranger, it can be creepy. It can be a little uncomfortable what you're complimenting, right? But if mm -hmm. it's something like if they have a t-shirt and it's a band that you both like, that's a great conversation starter, and you feel, wow, we're connected, you know. Mm -hmm. um, number two, the, the second thing I was thinking about is that keep it honest. I love, I love mm -hmm. a sincere compliment. It really means a lot more, and, and it really does butter them up, kind of get them open to, to having more conversations deeper, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, but one of the things people do, which, which I don't like, is let's say they say, hey, nice shirt. And then the person, out of habit, will say, oh, you too, I like your shirt too. Just my opinion, I don't think this feels really natural, doesn't really feel sincere. So I would, I would save it, make a mental note and go, hmm, I need to return the favor. I need to give them a compliment. But wait until you notice something you really do like and say, hey, actually, I love blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I think, I think that's, that's a great point. Like hmm. when you, you can sense whether someone is being sincere or not. What is your next strategy gonna... for continuing an English conversation? Well, don't be afraid to open up. I like this one. I think this is good. Um, a lot of people will be kind of shy. They won't open up too much. Again, within, within your comfort zone. But I like this one um, because people will return the favor. Because if you're just having small talk and you say, you know, the weather's nice today, blah, 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 you can only go so far. So don't be afraid to say something personal. Again, trust your judgment. Don't be a creeper. Don't go, we don't want to hear certain things about your life. So don't, don't be a creep. <laughs> don't be a creep. Don't be weird. Don't be strange. And like what you're saying about opening up. Open up is just a phrase that means share something about yourself. Um, so it can be as simple as what you did last weekend or what you're going to do this weekend or a project that you have coming up. It doesn't mean that you have to spill all of your life secrets to the other person, but just showing that you're willing to share something more personal about yourself can help ingratiate yourself or can help, you know, make the other person help the other person understand you a little bit better. That's a good tip. I like that tip. That's hard to do though. It's hard. It's a mm. little bit scary, I think, yeah. to share parts of yourself, but it's good. It's a good way to meet people and make friends. All right. I think that's all. Is that all that you have? Yeah, that's okay. all I got. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, those are some interesting uh, strategies 
to keep an English conversation going. So give them a try. If you're ever at a loss for words and don't know what to say, you can try one of these strategies and hopefully it will help you out. Um, please let us know if you have any other strategies or anything else that you would like to use or you try to use when you are having trouble keeping a conversation going. Uh, leave us a comment and let us know what it is. We will see you again next time. Do you have anything else you'd like to add? That's about it. All right, so thanks very much for joining us and take care. Bye-bye. Want to speak real English from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at EnglishClass101.com. Hi, everyone. I'm Gabriella. How are your English listening skills? In this video, you'll have a chance to test them out with a quiz. First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? A woman is asking a store clerk something at a bookstore. Which book does the woman want to see? Excuse me, I'd like to take a look at a book on that shelf. Which book would you like? The one about cars. One moment, please. This one? Yep, yeah, that's right. Here you go. Which book does the woman want to see? A woman is asking a store clerk something at a bookstore. Which book does the woman want to see? Excuse me, I'd like to take a look at a book on that shelf. Which book would you like? The one about cars. One moment, please. This one? Yep, yeah, that's right. Here you go. A man and a woman are looking over a menu at a restaurant. What's the man going to order? What are you going to order? The pizza looks delicious. I think I'll go with that. I had pizza yesterday, so... Okay, then. What about the hamburger? Sounds good. I'll go with that. What's the man going to order? A man and a woman are looking over a menu at a restaurant. What's the man going to order? What are you going to order? The pizza looks delicious. I think I'll go with that. I had pizza yesterday, so... Okay, then. What about the hamburger? Sounds good. I'll go with that. A man is calling the doctor's office. What time does he need to be at the doctor's office by? Hello, how can I help you? What time do you close today? We close at 6 o'clock, but please come in before 5.30. Okay, thank you. What time does he need to be at the doctor's office by? A man is calling the doctor's office. What time does he need to be at the doctor's office by? Hello, how can I help you? What time do you close today? We close at 6 o'clock, but please come in before 5.30. Okay, thank you. Good evening, ma'am. May I have your first and last names? Melissa West. Thank you, ma'am. I have found your reservation. Here's the registration information. Does everything look correct to you? Yes, it seems to be correct. Excellent. Now, I will just need a photo ID for legal purposes. Will my passport do? That would be just fine, ma'am. Checkout is between noon and 2 o'clock. You may request an extension of up to five hours free of charge. What if I need more time? Then a late charge of 5% will be added to your bill. How are your English listening skills? First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. A boy is reading from his journal. What was the first thing the boy did today? The weather was great today. 
I went swimming this afternoon at the pool. And I went to a movie in the evening. I also studied all morning. Today wasn't bad. What was the first thing the boy did today? A boy is reading from his journal. What was the first thing the boy did today? The weather was great today. I went swimming this afternoon at the pool. And I went to a movie in the evening. I also studied all morning. Today wasn't bad. A woman and a man are looking at a photograph. Which photo are they looking at? This is a photo of the soccer team your son is on, isn't it? Which one is your son? This one. Oh, he's the tallest one. Yep, he's even taller than the coach. Which photo are they looking at? A woman and a man are looking at a photograph. Which photo are they looking at? This is a photo of the soccer team your son is on, isn't it? Which one is your son? This one. Oh, he's the tallest one. Yep, he's even taller than the coach. A man and a woman are talking. When are they going to see the movie? Why don't we go see a movie on Saturday? Yes, I'd love to, but I have to work a shift in the morning. What time will you finish? I'll finish at 2 o'clock. Then let's meet up at the cafe at 3 o'clock and see a movie at 4 o'clock. Okay. When are they going to see the movie? A man and a woman are talking. When are they going to see the movie? Why don't we go see a movie on Saturday? Yes, I'd love to. But I have to work a shift in the morning. What time will you finish? I'll finish at 2 o'clock. Then let's meet up at the cafe at 3 o'clock and see a movie at 4 o'clock. Okay. My major is education. How about you? I'm an English major. Cool. I like English. Oh, and what's Oksana's major? She's also an English major. That's nice. You can help each other study. Yep. In fact, I need to meet her now so we can study together. Okay. It was nice talking with you. You too. See you later. See ya. How are your English listening skills? First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. A man is talking with a salesperson at the mall. Which shirt is he going to buy? Hmm. Which shirt do you think is better? The white one or the blue one? Well, I think the blue one is better. It goes well with this gray jacket. You think so? But it doesn't go so well with this red tie, does it? Well, that's true. Okay, then I'll take the white one, not the blue one. Which shirt is he going to buy? A man is talking with a salesperson at the mall. Which shirt is he going to buy? Hmm. Which shirt do you think is better? The white one or the blue one? Well, I think the blue one is better. It goes well with this gray jacket. You think so? But it doesn't go so well with this red tie, does it? Well, that's true. Okay, then I'll take the white one, not the blue one. A man is at a hamburger place. Which meal is he going to order? Excuse me, could I have the value meal, please? Sure thing. Which do you want, french fries or salad? French fries. Okay. What will you have to drink? Coke, please. Which meal is he going to order? A man is at a hamburger place. Which meal is he going to order? 
Excuse me, could I have the value meal, please? Sure thing. Which do you want, French fries or salad? French fries. Okay. What will you have to drink? Coke, please. A teacher is baking a cake. What did the teacher put in it? Today we're baking a cake. First, mix butter and sugar. Then add two eggs and mix them well. Add flour and mix it a little bit. Put it in the oven and bake it for 50 minutes. That's it. What did the teacher put in it? A teacher is baking a cake. What did the teacher put in it? Today we're baking a cake. First, mix butter and sugar. Then add two eggs and mix them well. Add flour and mix it a little bit. Put it in the oven and bake it for 50 minutes. That's it. Okay, everybody. Shift information has been posted for the month. It looks like we'll visit 25 cities in 30 days. Do we normally visit 25 different cities in one month? Yes. Sometimes we visit even more. Where's our first stop? Charlotte. Hey, I have friends in Charlotte. It would be nice to see them. Want to speak real English from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at EnglishClass101.com. How are your English listening skills? First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. A man and a woman are talking. What are they going to do first? What do you want to do today? I want to go see a movie. Okay, I want to watch the baseball game on TV. Also, I want to go shopping. The baseball game starts at 1 o'clock. Okay, so let's see the movie first, and then you can watch the baseball game. All right, then we'll go shopping in the evening. What are they going to do first? A man and a woman are talking. What are they going to do first? What do you want to do today? I want to go see a movie. Okay, I want to watch the baseball game on TV. Also, I want to go shopping. The baseball game starts at 1 o'clock. Okay, so let's see the movie first, and then you can watch the baseball game. All right, then we'll go shopping in the evening. A teacher and a student are talking. When will the student go to the teacher's office? I didn't really understand today's class. I see. What was confusing? Several things. Do you have time now? Actually, I'm a little busy. Could you come to my office in the afternoon? I'll be there from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. Okay. I'll be there at 2 p.m. When will the student go to the teacher's office? A teacher and a student are talking. When will the student go to the teacher's office? I didn't really understand today's class. I see. What was confusing? Several things. Do you have time now? Actually, I'm a little busy. Could you come to my office in the afternoon? I'll be there from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. Okay, I'll be there at 2 p.m. A woman is having lunch in a restaurant. What is she going to order? Would you like to have coffee or dessert after the meal? What desserts do you have? We have pudding and apple pie. Hmm, actually, I'll just have coffee. Do you want cream or sugar? Cream, please. What is she going to order? A woman is having lunch in a restaurant. What is she going to order? 
Would you like to have coffee or dessert after the meal? What desserts do you have? We have pudding and apple pie. Hmm. Actually, I'll just have coffee. Do you want cream or sugar? Cream, please. Good evening, in room dining. This is Alex. How may I be of service? Hello, I would like to order some food. Of course, ma'am. Just to confirm, this is Mrs. Rawson in room 417? Yes, it is. Excellent. May I take your order? Yes, I would like a turkey sandwich on a Parmesan bagel. And what to drink? A Diet Coke. Will there be anything else? Yes, I would also like a wake-up call for seven. A woman is waiting for a man. Where is the woman now? Hey, really sorry, but it looks like I'll be 30 minutes late. Okay, I'll wait for you at the cafe. Cafe? Where is it? It's next to the bookstore. There's a bakery across from the cafe. Okay. Where is the woman now? A woman is waiting for a man. Where is the woman now? Hey, really sorry, but it looks like I'll be 30 minutes late. Okay, I'll wait for you at the cafe. Cafe? Where is it? It's next to the bookstore. There's a bakery across from the cafe. Okay. A man and a woman are talking about summer vacation. What is the woman going to do on her summer vacation? Have you already planned for the summer vacation? Not yet. I'm thinking about going to the sea or the mountains. I'm going to the beach with some friends. We're going surfing. Sounds nice. Why don't you come with us? Wow, sure. Thanks. What is the woman going to do on her summer vacation? A man and a woman are talking about summer vacation. What is the woman going to do on her summer vacation? Have you already planned for the summer vacation? Not yet. I'm thinking about going to the sea or the mountains. I'm going to the beach with some friends. We're going surfing. Sounds nice. Why don't you come with us? Wow, sure. Thanks. A man and a woman are talking. What did the woman eat this morning? Oh, I'm hungry. Did you eat anything for breakfast? Yes, I did, but only a little. What did you eat? I had yogurt and coffee. That's not enough. You'll need some bread and fruit, too. What did the woman eat this morning? A man and a woman are talking. What did the woman eat this morning? Oh, I'm hungry. Did you eat anything for breakfast? Yes, I did, but only a little. What did you eat? I had yogurt and coffee. That's not enough. You'll need some bread and fruit, too. Hey, Vicky, did you forget our study date at 10 this morning? I'm sorry, Naomi. At 10, I was talking with my professor and couldn't get away. I'm sorry. I should have called. That's okay. So, how did the meeting go with the professor? It went fine. He gave me an extension on my paper, and I can still take the midterm. How was your study group yesterday? Well, we were studying together during lunch when I noticed an old friend of mine from high school in the same cafe. My concentration quickly switched from class to catching up with my friend, so I didn't get much done. You've taken that class before, right? Yeah, last semester. I was always asking questions in that class because it was so difficult. Well, 
I was hoping that you could lend me a hand with my paper. I can't think of anything else to write. Sure, no problem. That is, if you can help me study for our history test. Sounds like a deal. Hi everyone, I'm Gabriella. How are your English listening skills? In this video, you'll have a chance to test them out with a quiz. First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? A woman is in a department store. Which floor is she going to? Excuse me, where are the children's clothes? They're on the fifth and sixth floors. Do you also have baby clothes? Yes, they're on the sixth floor. We have a lot there. Thank you very much. I'll go and have a look there. Which floor is she going to? A woman is in a department store. Which floor is she going to? Excuse me, where are the children's clothes? They're on the fifth and sixth floors. Do you also have baby clothes? Yes, they're on the sixth floor. We have a lot there. Thank you very much. I'll go and have a look there. A woman is in a department store. Which floor is she going to? Excuse me, where are the children's clothes? They're on the fifth and sixth floors. Do you also have baby clothes? Yes, they're on the sixth floor. We have a lot there. Thank you very much. I'll go and have a look there. Which floor is she going to? A woman is in a department store. Which floor is she going to? Excuse me, where are the children's clothes? They're on the fifth and sixth floors. Do you also have baby clothes? Yes, they're on the sixth floor. We have a lot there. Thank you very much. I'll go and have a look there. Here's how you say to die of cuteness. Oh, this sounds good. I don't know how to say this really. Kare ni kyunshin ni suru. Kare ni kyunji ni suru. Kare ni kyunji ni suru. I learned something. Hey everyone, have you heard about Daily Dose? It's a new application that you can use to help you study languages on a daily basis. So I've been looking at the uh, the Japanese one, for example, now, and there's a lot of stuff that's related to maybe my everyday life, or there's stuff that's related to things that I've been reading about. How to say whose is this in Japanese? Kore wa dare no desu ka? Oh, yeah. Right now we have Japanese, American English, Korean, Mexican Spanish, Chinese, French, German, Italian, Russian, and Thai. So there are a lot of languages that you can choose from, and it's totally free to use the application. Again, if you are a subscriber, um, you can have access to the past information too. Using a language every day is a really, really important part of becoming fluent in your language. If you're interested in checking out the Daily Dose application, please click the link right here and get started right away. Happy studying! Japanese words of the week, falling in love. Oh, cool, cool application. A man and a woman are talking. How old is the man now? Your birthday is really soon, isn't it? Yep, it's the day after tomorrow. How old are you going to be? I'm turning 60. Congratulations, we should celebrate. Thank you very much, it's kind of you to say. How old is the man now? A man and a woman are talking. How old is the man now? Your birthday is really soon, isn't it? Yep, it's the day after tomorrow. How old are you going to be? I'm turning 60. Congratulations, we should celebrate. Thank you very much, it's kind of you to say. Want to speak real English from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at EnglishClass101.com. Hi everybody, welcome back to Top Words. My name is Alicia and today we're going to be talking about 10 breakup lines. These are lines that you can use when you want to end a romantic relationship. Wah, wah. Let's go!
I need my space. I need my space. I need my space. So if you feel the other person is maybe just always with you, always looking for time or just bothering you, whatever, doesn't matter. You don't want to spend time with that person anymore. You can say, I need my space. Oh, do you want to go to the movies with me this weekend? It was so much fun to see you yesterday, and we can do something tomorrow, and then we can go to the movies together too. Don't you think it'll be great? Actually, I need my space. I need to focus on my career. I need to focus on my career. Ooh, so maybe you're really, really busy with work, uh, or you're just looking for an excuse to break up with the person. To break up with someone, you can say, I'm really sorry, but right yeah. now I need to focus on my career. I think we need a break. I think we need a break. This is after you've been seeing someone for some time and you decide that maybe they're not the right person for you. Um, you can say, I think we need a break. Be careful though, this phrase sounds like there's a chance you may get back together in the future. If you don't feel that there's a chance you will be continuing to see this person, maybe choose a different line to break up with them. I think we're moving too fast. This is an expression you might use towards the beginning of a relationship. Maybe, for example, you meet someone and then you start dating them and, and then a month later they're like, let's move in together. And then three months later it's like, oh, let's get married it's, or whatever. The pace of the relationship seems too fast. You can say, I think we're moving too fast. So if you say this phrase, maybe it doesn't mean that you want to break up, but just this pace is too fast for me. Let's slow down. I'm just not ready for this kind of relationship. I'm just not ready for this kind of relationship. This could have many different meanings. Maybe the relationship is very serious and you're not looking for a serious relationship. You can say, I'm not ready for this kind of relationship. Saying, I'm not ready sounds like it's me, it's my problem. I'm not ready for this kind of relationship. It's not you, it's me. It's not you, it's me. There's no problem with you. Rather, I have a problem. Maybe they're just struggling with some things that they're not, mm, they don't want to bring into a relationship. Or maybe they're just trying to be polite. Maybe it is you, <laughs> maybe it is you, but the other person is trying to be kind. So you can say, it's not you, it's me. Let's just be friends. Let's just be friends. You've been in a relationship with someone for a while and you decide, mm, maybe it's better if we don't date each other, but I still like this person, so let's just be friends. We need to talk. Oh no, we need to talk. The dreaded, we need to talk. If someone says, we need to talk, in that tone, we need to talk, or if you get like a text message that says, we need to talk, it's never, we need to talk. I want to get a puppy. It's never a happy thing. If you see, if you hear, we need to talk, it's, oh no, something is bad in my relationship and I'm about to hear about it. Dun, dun, dun. So you can follow we need to talk with uh, an actual issue that you need to discuss about your relationship, um, or it can mean the end of the relationship. You want to talk about ending the relationship. We should start seeing other people. The next breakup line is we should start seeing other people. Ouch means I don't want to see you anymore. Ah, one point about this. When we are in a relationship with someone, there are a couple of different verbs that we use. We use the verb uh, seeing, to see someone, uh, and to date, uh, to go out with. Uh, those are a few. So in this expression we see we should start seeing other people. So it doesn't mean just like like stand across the room. Oh, I see another person. I see you. Hey! Like, no, it means date. It means be in a relationship with. We use the verb to see for that. One of the things that is said about this phrase is that if someone uses the phrase, we should start seeing other people, there's a good chance that person is already seeing someone else. Ouch. Ouch. You deserve better. The next phrase is you deserve better. Oh, so if someone says to you, you deserve better. I think we should end the relationship. You deserve better. It means that the person feels they are not good enough. They're not enough for you. Uh, and so they think you should find someone better than the person saying the phrase. Again, um, this could be a sincere expression or it could just be a very polite and kind way to end a relationship with someone. How are your English listening skills? First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. A woman is looking at clothes in a boutique. What is she going to buy? 
Wow, this blue skirt and that white skirt. I like them both. The white skirt is really popular right now. The blue one's a bit expensive, too. Well, that's true, but it suits you. Um, I can't afford both. I'll take the white one. An excellent choice. Thank you very much. What is she going to buy? A woman is looking at clothes in a boutique. What is she going to buy? Wow, this blue skirt and that white skirt. I like them both. The white skirt is really popular right now. The blue one's a bit expensive, too. Well, that's true, but it suits you. Um, I can't afford both. I'll take the white one. An excellent choice. Thank you very much. A man and a woman are talking. How many people in total are coming to the party? The party's tomorrow. Who's coming? Well, the two of us, two friends of mine, and my pottery teacher. That will make five then. Oh, well, my teacher's also bringing his wife. Wow, a big party then. How many people in total are coming to the party? A man and a woman are talking. How many people in total are coming to the party? The party's tomorrow. Who's coming? Well, the two of us, two friends of mine, and my pottery teacher. That will make five then. Oh, well, my teacher's also bringing his wife. Wow, a big party then. Hi everybody, welcome back to Top Words. My name is Alicia and today we're going to be talking about American food. So let's get started. Apple pie. The first food is apple pie. Apple pie is a delicious and sweet American dessert. It is as it sounds. It is a pie, so a bit of crust and on the inside is apple, fresh apple I hope. Large feasts often have an apple pie for dessert. In a sentence, my mom cooks an apple pie every Thanksgiving. Chocolate chip cookie. Next food is the chocolate chip cookie. This is a very popular cookie. It's a simple cookie. You just put chocolate chips into any cookie, into anything, and you can make a chocolate chip cookie. If you eat it, there's a very kind of nostalgic childhood feel about a chocolate chip cookie. In a sentence, when I was a child, I made chocolate chip cookies with my mom and my brother. That's true. Hamburger. The next food is probably the first food you thought of when I said we were talking about American foods today. It is the hamburger. Woohoo! A beef patty uh, between two buns, two buns, uh, two pieces of bread. And depending on your preference, you can put anything you like on your hamburger. Many people like to use cheese, thereby making it a cheeseburger. You can use lettuce, ketchup, tomato, onion, mustard, relish, whatever, go crazy, bacon, avocado, anything, really. I love trying new and interesting hamburger combinations. Jelly beans. Jelly beans. This is an interesting American food. They're colorful. They usually come in a package about this size, maybe. This big. They are kind of a squishy, jelly-like uh, candy. Very, very sugary. And they usually have some kind of fruit flavor. You can find the regular jelly beans, which are sweet and delicious. Or you can find jelly beans, which are maybe a mysterious mixture. In a sentence, uh, when I was a kid, I loved eating jelly beans. This is an actual picture from a, one of the, from a supermarket. Almost all of those are jelly beans or they're candies to some degree. So you can see there are like bins to scoop the candy out of. There's a bin to like pour candy from. This is amazing. American candy is just unreal. There's so much turkey. Okay, the next food is turkey. Turkey, it's a weird big bird that we almost always <laughs> eat at Thanksgiving. That's right, turkeys, you're weird. In a sentence, every year my family cooks a turkey for Thanksgiving dinner. Boston baked beans. The next food is Boston baked beans. This is something I haven't had in a long time. As you might have guessed, it's an East Coast uh, style food from Boston. So Boston style baked beans are typically sweetened with molasses or with maple syrup. In a sentence, I'm going to make a chili later today with Boston baked beans. Grits. This is a food that comes from the Southern part of America. 
I didn't eat grits growing up, so I don't really know very well. From a video that we did a while back, we learned that grits are commonly eaten uh, at breakfast. You can eat them with butter. I eat grits every day for breakfast. Hush puppies. Ah, here we are again. The next American food is hush puppies. Hush puppies uh, from the same video that we talked about grits. Our friend Keith came in and told us about hush puppies. It's just a ball of dough that is fried. That's it. Uh, very, very simple food. Very, very healthy, surely. <laughs> no. Uh, in a sentence, I haven't had hush puppies yet and I really want to try them, but they don't seem very healthy, so it's not high on my to-do list. Biscuits and gravy. Oh, okay, great. The next food is biscuits and gravy. It's a very simple dish, as you can guess. It's just a biscuit and gravy. The gravy is usually very, very rich, very, very fatty, very fattening. This is a dish that is typically eaten for breakfast. A simple coffee shop or just, yeah, a local, a local simple restaurant might have biscuits and gravy on the menu. In a sentence, I used to eat biscuits and gravy at my grandparents' house in the winter. Philly cheesesteaks. Oh my god, I'm getting so hungry for a very not healthy food. Okay, the next food is Philly cheesesteaks. Ah, oh, Philly cheesesteaks are so good. Philly is short for Philadelphia, the city of Philadelphia. Philly cheesesteak is a sandwich from Philadelphia. The sandwich has cheese and steak. Oh my god, can you hear my stomach? Yeah. Delicious, delicious. It's a very East Coast, East Coast American sandwich. In a sentence, if you go to Philadelphia, make sure you try a Philly cheesesteak sandwich. How are your English listening skills? First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. A woman bought a bed. Where is she going to put it? Your new bed. It's huge. Yep. I can't put it by the door. Let's put it at the other end of the room. Shall we put it in the middle? No. Let's put it in the corner. Okay. Sounds good. Can you help me lift it? Where is she going to put it? A woman bought a bed. Where is she going to put it? Your new bed. It's huge. Yep. I can't put it by the door. Let's put it at the other end of the room. Shall we put it in the middle? No. Let's put it in the corner. Okay. Sounds good. Can you help me lift it? A teacher is talking to some students. What will the students bring with them the next day? Tomorrow, we're going to a museum. Bring a pen and notebook and something to drink. We'll have lunch in the restaurant at the museum, so you don't need to bring a sandwich. What about an umbrella? It might be raining, so please bring one. Okay. What will the students bring with them the next day? A teacher is talking to some students. What will the students bring with them the next day? Tomorrow, we're going to a museum. Bring a pen and notebook and something to drink. We'll have lunch in the restaurant at the museum, so you don't need to bring a sandwich. What about an umbrella? It might be raining, so please bring one. Okay. A woman is talking with a store employee. Which floor is the woman going to? Excuse me, where are the women's clothes? On the third, fourth, and fifth floors. Which floor has coats? The fourth floor. The elevator is right over there. The fourth floor? Okay, thank you. Which floor is the woman going to? A woman is talking with a store employee. Which floor is the woman going to? Excuse me, where are the women's clothes? On the third, fourth, and fifth floors. Which floor has coats? The fourth floor. 
The elevator is right over there. The fourth floor? Okay, thank you. Want to speak real English from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at EnglishClass101.com. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Top Words. My name is Alicia, and today we're going to be talking about 10 words you can use to talk about music. So let's go. Concert. The first word for talking about music is concert. Concert is a live show. Concert is, yeah, the performance is happening in front of your eyes. So uh, concerts are really popular worldwide, I think. Depending on where you live, you might hear them called live shows, but usually uh, in American English, we just say concert, a concert. So in a sentence, I'm going to a concert this weekend. To see in concert. The next expression is the verb we use for a live show. So the next expression is to see in a concert or to see in concert. So we use uh, the artist's name along with this phrase. So for example, I'm going to see Coldplay in concert. <laughs> I'm going to see Adele in concert. Uh, so you use I'm going to see artist name in concert or um, in a concert. What did I just say? In concert or in a concert. Both are okay. So in a different sentence, I'm going to see my favorite band in concert, meaning live. Who do I want to see in concert? I want to see Michael Jackson in concert. <sighs> yeah, I would have loved to see him in concert. He's my favorite. To listen to music. To listen to artist. The next word or the next phrase is to listen to plus music or to listen to an artist. So you can use uh, this verb with uh, the type of music or with the specific artist or band or group that you like. So I like to listen to rock music. I like to listen to uh, pop music, whatever. Uh, another sentence is I like listening to Beyonce. I like, yeah, so you can use to listen to or listening to. Both are fine here. I like listening to funk. It's fine. I like listening to funky artists. It's fine. I like listening to Queens of the Stone Age. It's fine. All of these are great. Who do you listen to? I listen to lots of things. To write a song, to write music. The next expression is to write a song or to write music. So if you want to make music yourself, you can say write a song, which just means one song, uh, maybe three or four minutes usually uh, in popular music, or to write music in general. So um, you can use both of these expressions. Song is more specific, music is more general. So in a sentence, my friend started writing songs recently. Or in a different sentence, writing music is really fun. Track. The next expression is track, track. So we can use song, yes, but for example, when you look at a, an album, uh, like on iTunes or maybe like a CD, for example, each, uh, each song is assigned a number. That's the track number. So we can say, uh, I like track number three or track three. We use track to talk about a song. So you can say, this is a good song or this is a good track. Both are okay to use. Song and track are both fine. Um, so in a sentence, I really like that track from his album. Beat. The next word is beat. So the beat is sort of the feeling of a song that uh, usually it's easy to hear because there's like a bass drum or there's some kind of heavy feeling. It gives you the sense of rhythm of a song. So in a sentence, we would say like song should have a catchy beat or uh, that that uh, that song has a really catchy beat, or I like the beat of that song. Tempo. So tempo, the next word is tempo. Tempo means the pace of a song, how fast or how slow a song goes. So uh, you can have songs with a fast tempo or with a slow tempo or somewhere in between. So you can change the tempo of a song and maybe change the feeling. Uh, in a sentence, Tracks with a slow tempo are nice on quiet evenings. Upbeat. The next word is upbeat. So this word uses beat, which we talked about before. But upbeat, this is an adjective that we use for something. Maybe it's uh, a faster tempo song. Uh, maybe it sounds kind of positive or cheerful. 
uh, a little bit happy. So an upbeat track or an upbeat song sounds uh, maybe it has it has a good positive feeling about it or good positive vibe, something like that. So in a sentence, this song is really upbeat. Upbeat. We can use upbeat for people too. Like my best friend is really upbeat. Something positive or happy. Down tempo. Next, we'll go to maybe the opposite of upbeat. The next word is down tempo. Tempo means pace and down meaning like decreased or slower. So a down tempo song has a slow tempo. It's more relaxed. Yeah, maybe it's good for just kind of hanging out or it's a little bit slower. Maybe you hear uh, this at a restaurant or a cafe, perhaps a down tempo song. So in a sentence, I like down tempo music. Genre. The next word is a great pronunciation point for many students. It's genre, genre. So not genre or genre, I don't know, but genre is the correct pronunciation of this word. Genre means the type of music. You can use genre to talk about movies as well, books too, uh, but it means the type of something. So type of maybe art you could consider or type of creativity. So uh, genre in, t in music is, for example, rock, pop, funk, house, soul, disco, heavy metal, uh, classical, country, rap, uh, hip hop, blues, all these are genres of music. So they're types of music. You can say, what type of music do you like or what genre of music do you listen to? So in a sentence, I listen to lots of different genres of music. Hi everybody and welcome back to Top Words. My name is Alicia and today we're gonna talk about 10 words for talking about sleep. Let's go. To wake up. The first word is to wake up. To wake up is to open your eyes, probably in your bed or the place where you are sleeping. To wake up is to, uh, to become conscious, to become awake. <laughs> Every day you wake up, uh, presumably, hopefully. In a sentence, I woke up three times last night. To get up, to get out of bed. All right, the next word is to get up or to get out of bed. So that means to physically move your body from your bed out of bed, to stand up from your bed, to get out of your bed. We say to get up or to get out of bed. In a sentence, I got up at eight o'clock this morning. To snooze. The next word is to snooze. So we have to snooze an alarm and also to snooze. So to snooze means to take a short sleep, to have a short sleeping time. Or to snooze an alarm is uh, when your alarm goes off in the morning, you have a button. Most alarm clocks have some button you can press so the alarm will turn on again in like you know, five or 10 minutes or something. So to snooze an alarm is to, like, to ask your alarm to wake you up again a few minutes later, that's uh, to snooze. So we have to snooze an alarm and to snooze, meaning like a short, light sleep. In a sentence, I always snooze my alarm at least once. That is usually true. <laughs> to oversleep. The next word is to oversleep. To oversleep means to sleep too much or to sleep late. Uh, actually, no, it doesn't mean to sleep late. Uh, to sleep late means just to sleep until a late time in the day. Uh, oversleep means sleeping beyond the time you wanted to get up. So for example, if my alarm is set for eight o'clock, but I wake up at nine o'clock, I overslept. I slept beyond my wake up time. So we can use oversleep to talk about times when you sleep too much. You sleep uh, more than your body needs you to. So maybe your body needs, depending on the person, like six to nine hours or so. But if you sleep like 14 hours, we can say that's oversleeping. You're sleeping too much. Mm. That's the nuance here. In a sentence, I overslept on my first day of work. Nap. The next word is nap. Nap is a short sleep. So a nap is maybe 30 minutes, one hour, just a short sleep, a short rest. So a lot of people will take a nap in the afternoon, for example, or maybe children actually 
take naps, for example, in preschool or when they're very, very young. They have a, an afternoon nap, a short sleep, like, yeah, just a, like an hour or so, I imagine. In a sentence, I love naps. Actually, I do like naps. I don't like naps because when I take a nap, it becomes a sleep. It's always like f I wake up four hours later and I'm like, well, okay, well, I've destroyed my sleep schedule. Dream. The next word is dream, dream. So dreams are those, those visions, those images you see, those ex maybe experiences it seems like you have when you are asleep. In a sentence, I always have weird dreams. Nightmare. So the next word is nightmare. Nightmare is a word which means bad dream or scary dream, negative dream. So uh, children maybe have nightmares a lot. They wake up crying or they're really upset by nightmares, monsters, uh, terrifying things happening and so on. In a sentence, do you ever have nightmares? To go to bed. The next word is to go to bed. So before we talked about to get up or to get out of bed, this is the opposite. To go to bed means to get in your bed, uh, to, to try to go to sleep, to go to bed. In a sentence, I usually go to bed fairly late. To hit the hay, to hit the sack. The next expression is kind of a, I don't know, a slang expression. Uh, we have to hit the hay and to hit the sack. These both mean to go to bed. Um, they both mean to try to fall asleep, but we just use them in more casual situations. The image here of hit the hay is with your body hitting hay, like laying down in hay. Uh, I believe historically because uh, hay was used to stuff um, things that people slept on. Um, so that's why we have this expression to hit the hay with your body. Same thing for to hit the sack. So a sack full of something soft to sleep on uh, is where this expression comes from. In a sentence, I think I'm going to hit the hay to fall asleep. The next expression, it is to fall asleep. To fall asleep, you're in bed. And you finally, you lose consciousness. You, you stop being aware. You are asleep. In that moment, we say, you fall asleep. In a sentence, it takes me a long time to fall asleep. All right. Hi, everyone. I'm Christine from EnglishClass101.com. In this video, we'll be talking about 10 phrases to help you in an emergency. Let's begin. Help. Use this phrase when you need help or when you want someone to rescue you. In case of an emergency, dial 911. In the United States, the phone number you can dial in case of an emergency is 911. For police, also dial 911. The number is the same for calling the police. It's easy to remember. Call the police, please. Use this phrase when you need someone to call the police. Please state the nature of your emergency. This is what the 911 call center or an officer will say to ask for more details about your emergency. I need a doctor. Use this phrase when you are not feeling very well and want to get medical help. I need an ambulance. Use this phrase when you need an ambulance to come and take you to the hospital. There's a fire. This is a very simple way to catch people's attention in case of a fire. After saying this, you need to explain what happened and where the fire is. I want to report a crime. Use this phrase when you want to report a crime that has happened to you or someone else. My location is... When you call for help through the phone, you'll need to say where you are. Start your explanation with this phrase. Hi everyone, it's Christine. Welcome back to another episode of Top Words. Today, we'll be talking about 10 reasons to start learning a language. Let's go! It's a beautiful language. Every language has specific characteristics and some people like the way certain languages sound. Some languages might sound better to you than others. My family comes from a place where the language is spoken. For many people, their cultural heritage is very important to them. If your family speaks another language, you might not be able to talk to some of your relatives or fully understand your background. So many people try to learn the language of the place they've descended from. I love the culture and the people who speak the language. 
If you're really interested in a specific country and its culture, this can be a great reason to learn a language. It's also shown that being interested in a culture motivates language learners to work harder and get better results. I just love learning languages. Some people learn because they have to, and some people just learn because they find it interesting. Learning a language takes time and effort, and some people love the challenge. The language is useful for my job. Gaining new skills is important for many professionals. Being able to speak another language can potentially help your business make more money and maybe even get you a promotion. I live in a country that speaks the language. Living in a country and not being able to speak the language can be hard. Learning the language of the place you live can help you make friends, get a job, and have an easier life. I want to open my mind and become more international. For many people, feeling connected to other cultures and broadening their horizons is especially important. Learning a new language can change how you interact with the world. I want to understand my favorite songs, movies, and TV shows. If you're really into a culture, learning that culture's language can help you enjoy it even more. Learning a new language can add depth to your appreciation of a culture. I love traveling. People who have been bitten by the travel bug, but traveling to a place where you don't know the language can be hard. For example, if you can speak Spanish, there are so many different countries you can visit. It's part of my university studies. Most universities require you to take language class for a few semesters to graduate, but it doesn't have to feel like work. Learning a language for university can open great opportunities in the future. Vamos! Hi everybody! Welcome back to Top Words. My name is Alicia and today we're going to be talking about 10 gamer speak words. I am excited about this one. Let's go. First word is achievement. Achievement is used when you have completed a mission. In some games, there's a very famous phrase that says like, achievement unlocked. Good feeling. Beta. Beta. It's for something that's not quite finished, but that's maybe in like a testing phase. You could hear like the beta release of something or like the beta test version of blah, blah, blah. For example, I am beta testing a running game right now. That is true. Next is boss. If you've ever played a video game, probably you know about a boss battle. You've been playing through a level, and at the end of that level, there's a boss that you have to fight. It's kind of interesting now thinking about it, how we use boss for the main challenger that you have to defeat in a video game level, but we also use it for like our managers at work. So um, the next word is role-playing game. Role-playing game is commonly abbreviated, commonly shortened to RPG. This is a very popular style of game, a role-playing game, meaning you play a role. Role-playing games have evolved over years. Now you can play, for example, MMORPGs, massively multiplayer online role-playing game. I have been playing role-playing games since I was like 11 and my brother convinced me to play Final Fantasy VII. The next word is checkpoint. You might also hear save point. You save your game and then you continue on in the game and then if you die, you go back and you respawn. You come back to life from that checkpoint. I feel like checkpoint is used more in like a racing game, but save point is used more in an RPG. The next one is noob, N-O-O-B. I love the word noob. Mostly to talk about myself actually when I've made like a really stupid decision. Noob means rookie. It means someone who is inexperienced at something. You can use noob in a game if you find someone who has just joined the game. They're a brand new player. They are a noob. They don't know anything. Farming. Let's talk about farming. In gaming terms, it means you are trying to collect a certain item. It has like kind of a reputation for being a bit boring because you're just killing like the same creature over and over again. NPC, NPC means non-playable character. There are other characters within the game that move the story forward, but that you cannot play as. You cannot become that character, but you interact with them. I have to talk to an NPC in order to move this quest forward. Next is camper. A camper is someone who is waiting for a creature to spawn. So a person who's waiting for the monster to appear is called a camper. You can use 
camping as a verb too to talk about that. Like I'm camping this monster. Really? People camp other players? I suppose so, depending on the kind of game you're playing. MMO is a massively multiplayer online game. It means you can play online with a lot of different people, essentially. Want to speak real English from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at EnglishClass101.com. Learning to carry a conversation is vital to mastery of any language. Even beginners can quickly learn conversational language well enough to carry on real conversations with native speakers. Of course, beginners won't be able to carry a conversation the same way they could in their native language. But just knowing a few tips, like which questions to ask to keep a conversation going, are all you need to speak and interact with real native speakers. Before we get to specific suggestions, let's first take a closer look at how having real conversations in your target language is so vital to your mastery of the language. Communicating with other people is the very point of language, and conversation comes easily in our native tongue. For beginners, or anyone learning a new language, conversations aren't easy at all, and even simple greetings can be intimidating and awkward. Nothing kills a conversation faster than long periods of awkward silence, so you need practice and specific strategies to avoid them. When you know what to say to keep a conversation going, communication becomes much easier, and you make a better impression on your listener. Nothing will help you learn to speak a language faster and truly master the language than having real conversations with native speakers. Conversations quickly expose you to slang, cultural expressions, and vocabulary that force you to absorb and assimilate information faster than any educational setting. And that's a great thing. But how can you possibly have real conversations with real people if you're just starting out? Here are three proven methods that even beginners can quickly use to learn conversational language to make a great impression and avoid awkward silences. First, ask questions to keep a conversation going. For beginners and even more advanced speakers, the key is to ask questions to keep a conversation going. Of course, they can't be just random questions or else you may confuse the listener. But by memorizing a few key questions and the appropriate time to use them, you can easily carry a conversation with minimal vocabulary or experience. And remember, the more conversations you have, the quicker you will learn and master the language. Second, learn core vocabulary terms as quickly as possible. You don't need to memorize thousands of words to learn conversational language. In fact, with just a couple hundred words, you could have a very basic conversation. And by learning maybe 1,000 to 2,000 words, you could carry a conversation with a native speaker about current events, order in restaurants, and even get directions. To help you get started with this, check out our 2,000 common words, also known as our core list. These 2,000 words are all you need to learn to speak fluently and carry a conversation with a native speaker. Third, study video or audio lessons that you can play and replay again and again. If you want to know how to carry on a conversation, then you need exposure to native speakers, and the more, the better. Studying video or audio lessons is ideal because they provide contextualized learning in your native language, and you can play them again and again until you achieve mastery. Our instructors have created more than 2,500 video and audio lessons that you can play over and over. And the best part is, they don't just teach you vocabulary and grammar. They are designed to help you learn to speak and teach you practical everyday topics like shopping, ordering, and more. Although it may seem intimidating for a beginner, the truth is that it's very easy to learn conversational language. Just learn a few core vocabulary terms and which questions to ask to keep a conversation going. Our language learning program has the world's largest online collection of video and audio lessons by real instructors, plus tons of advanced tools to help you learn to speak and carry on a conversation quickly. Just a little practice and exposure to real conversations or lessons is all it really takes. So, if you're ready to finally learn a new language the fast, fun, and easy way, sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Signing up takes less than 30 seconds, and you'll start speaking from your very first lesson. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye! A man is reporting about his company's sales performance at a meeting. Which two charts is he using for his presentation?
Please look at the handout. The left chart shows our company's sales over the past three years and the sales forecast for the current year. And the right chart shows the monthly breakdown in sales up to October of this year. Now, please have a look at the left chart. It shows that sales have been steadily increasing over the past three years. And if we can keep increasing our sales, the total sales for this year will show an increase over last year. Next, please look at the right chart. The right chart shows that the campaigns we ran in April and August were fairly effective. I see, but the sales decreased in May and September following the campaigns. Yes, but this kind of decrease is unavoidable. I expect the annual sales for this year will show an increase over last year if we can keep increasing our sales. Which two charts is he using for his presentation? A man is reporting about his company's sales performance at a meeting. Which two charts is he using for his presentation? Please look at the handout. The left chart shows our company's sales over the past three years and the sales forecast for the current year. And the right chart shows the monthly breakdown in sales up to October of this year. Now, please have a look at the left chart. It shows that sales have been steadily increasing over the past three years. And if we can keep increasing our sales, the total sales for this year will show an increase over last year. Next, please look at the right chart. The right chart shows that the campaigns we ran in April and August were fairly effective. I see, but the sales decreased in May and September following the campaigns. Yes, but this kind of decrease is unavoidable. I expect the annual sales for this year will show an increase over last year if we can keep increasing our sales. A man is joining a sports club and getting information on its policies. What type of membership will he choose? Let me start by explaining our club's different membership options, as described in this brochure. Regular members can use the gym and the pool at any time on any day of the week, but we also offer early morning memberships where people can use the facilities only in the early morning, and night memberships for people who only want to come in the evening. What are the hours for early morning members? Early morning members can use the facilities from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m., and night members can use them from 6 p.m. to 11 p.m. I see. So early morning members can stop by and use the facilities on their way to work. Exactly. The early morning type is popular among people with 9 to 5 jobs, and we also offer memberships just for the gym or just for the pool, if you only want to use one of those. I want to use both, the gym and the pool. I think I'll use the gym in the early morning before going to work on weekdays and then use the pool on the weekend. Do you have a membership that covers something like early mornings for the weekdays but all day on the weekend? We're sorry, but we don't offer a membership like that, sir. Okay, I don't think I can get up that early on the weekend, so I'll choose this membership option. What type of membership will he choose? A man is joining a sports club and getting information on its policies. What type of membership will he choose? Let me start by explaining our club's different membership options, as described in this brochure. Regular members can use the gym and the pool at any time on any day of the week, but we also offer early morning memberships where people can use the facilities only in the early morning, and night memberships for people who only want to come in the evening. What are the hours for early morning members? Early morning members can use the facilities from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m., and night members can use them from 6 p.m. to 11 p.m. I see. So early morning members can stop by and use the facilities on their way to work. Exactly. The early morning type is popular among people with 9 to 5 jobs, and we also offer memberships just for the gym or just for the pool, if you only want to use one of those. I want to use both, the gym and the pool. I think I'll use the gym in the early morning before going to work on weekdays and then use the pool on the weekend. Do you have a membership that covers something like early mornings for the weekdays but all day on the weekend? We're sorry, but we don't offer a membership like that, sir. Okay, I don't think I can get up that early on the weekend, so I'll choose this membership option. A woman is talking with a man who works for an outsourced printing company about a brochure for a new product. When is the deadline for the first design draft for the brochure? We decided to launch the new product on October 15th, and we'd like to offer you the contract to make the brochure. Thank you so much. 
we're definitely excited about helping you with this project. So, could you tell us a bit about the schedule? When will you need everything by? Well, considering the time needed for printing, we'd like to get the brochures to the printing stage by the end of September. So, would it be possible for you to get us the first design draft by the middle of August? Well, we'd like to give you three design options for the initial draft, and then have you choose the one which best fits your concept. Then we'll make the final design based on your choice. So it'll be very helpful if you could give us two more weeks to prepare for this stage. Hmm. Okay. Maybe one month will be enough time to choose one of the designs you've made and then decide on the final design. All right. We'll be counting on you. You're in good hands. Our design team is the best. Thank you so much. When is the deadline for the first design draft for the brochure? A woman is talking with a man who works for an outsourced printing company about a brochure for a new product. When is the deadline for the first design draft for the brochure? We decided to launch the new product on October 15th, and we'd like to offer you the contract to make the brochure. Thank you so much. We're definitely excited about helping you with this project. So, could you tell us a bit about the schedule? When will you need everything by? Well, considering the time needed for printing, we'd like to get the brochures to the printing stage by the end of September. So, would it be possible for you to get us the first design draft by the middle of August? Well, we'd like to give you three design options for the initial draft, and then have you choose the one which best fits your concept. Then we'll make the final design based on your choice. So, it'll be very helpful if you could give us two more weeks to prepare for this stage. Hmm. Okay. Maybe one month will be enough time to choose one of the designs you've made and then decide on the final design. All right. We'll be counting on you. You're in good hands. Our design team is the best. Thank you so much. A woman is calling on the phone to reserve tickets for a play. Which two seats did she get? Hello. This is Blackfriars Playhouse. Can I help you? I'd like to get two tickets for King Lear at 5 30 this evening. Do you still have any tickets available? We do have a few seats left, but I'm sorry to say we don't have any next to each other. If you don't mind, though, we can get you two seats separately. Okay, we don't mind. Do you have any particular requests? Well, do you have any aisle seats? Yes, we have an aisle seat at the left side of the center section. And to the right of it, three seats over, we have another free seat. To the side? Okay, then please book that aisle seat. Certainly. How about the other one? Do you have any seats near the center? The only center seats we have left are from the first row to the third row. I'm not too crazy about having actors spit on me, so. This room is relatively small, and I think you could enjoy the play even at the end of the row on the side. Is that so? Then I'll take the one you mentioned before on the left side. Which two seats did she get? A woman is calling on the phone to reserve tickets for a play. Which two seats did she get? Hello, this is Blackfriars Playhouse. Can I help you? I'd like to get two tickets for King Lear at 5 30 this evening. Do you still have any tickets available? We do have a few seats left, but I'm sorry to say we don't have any next to each other. If you don't mind, though, We can get you two seats separately. Okay, we don't mind. Do you have any particular requests? Well, do you have any aisle seats? Yes, we have an aisle seat at the left side of the center section. And to the right of it, three seats over, we have another free seat. To the side? Okay, then please book that aisle seat. Certainly. How about the other one? Do you have any seats near the center? The only center seats we have left are from the first row to the third row. I'm not too crazy about having actors spit on me, so. This room is relatively small, and I think you could enjoy the play even at the end of the row on the side. Is that so? Then I'll take the one you mentioned before on the left side. A man and a woman are talking about preparations for a presentation they'll be making tomorrow at their office. What will the woman check after the conversation ends? Okay, I think we're almost ready for the presentation tomorrow. Just a few more things. The meeting will start at 9 sharp, so could you double check the meeting room today? Yep, I've already checked the room. Okay, great. Did you make sure the projector's working okay? 
Oh, I was going to check the projector tomorrow morning when I have my laptop. No, we've got to get that checked today. We won't have time to deal with it in the morning if there's a problem. So make sure to check that projector today. That's the most important thing, okay? Will do. And did you get the copies of those handouts? Ms. Tanaka is making them now. Let's see, what else? Oh, did you check the whiteboard? Yes, I did. Sometimes the pens don't have enough ink left in them. Did you get a chance to check them? Not yet, but I'll make sure to do that later. Yes, please make sure to do that today. What will the woman check after the conversation ends? A man and a woman are talking about preparations for a presentation they'll be making tomorrow at their office. What will the woman check after the conversation ends? Okay, I think we're almost ready for the presentation tomorrow. Just a few more things. The meeting will start at 9 sharp, so could you double check the meeting room today? Yep, I've already checked the room. Okay, great. Did you make sure the projector's working okay? Oh, I was going to check the projector tomorrow morning when I have my laptop. No, we've got to get that checked today. We won't have time to deal with it in the morning if there's a problem. So make sure to check that projector today. That's the most important thing, okay? Will do. And did you get the copies of those handouts? Ms. Tanaka is making them now. Let's see, what else? Oh, did you check the whiteboard? Yes, I did. Sometimes the pens don't have enough ink left in them. Did you get a chance to check them? Not yet, but I'll make sure to do that later. Yes, please make sure to do that today. Want to speak real English from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at EnglishClass101.com. Hi, everybody. My name is Alicia, and today we're going to be talking about 10 of the hardest words to pronounce, according to you guys. So we collected some information from you on Facebook. Thanks very much for sending in your ideas. And these were the top 10 uh, most difficult words for you to pronounce. So let's get started. Absolutely. Absolutely. Absolutely might be tough to pronounce. Absolutely means 100%. Absolutely is uh, an agreement phrase. Are you going to that music event next week? Absolutely. Yes, 100%. Definitely. Absolutely. Loot. Like a loot. L-U-T-E. Begrime. Begrime apparently means dirty. I have never heard nor used this word before, but perhaps it's difficult to pronounce. Begrime. The door to my apartment was begrimed in the storm last week. Breakfast. The next word is breakfast. Breakfast is hard to pronounce, but that is the meaning of breakfast. You're breaking the fast. So a fast is a period of time without eating. And to break means to, to well, in this case, breaking something. It doesn't refer to, like, crushing a thing, but um, stopping something. To break the fast of the night. In other words, so you're fasting during the night, you're not eating, so you wake up in the morning, you break the fast. But we don't say break fast, we say breakfast. In a sentence, this morning for breakfast, I ate a bowl of cereal with grapes, and I had a coffee too. Colleague. Colleague, yes, colleague. Many of my students struggle with this. They say colleague, or they say colleague you, or something, because the spelling of this word is really, really strange. There's that G-U-E at the end. Or more commonly, I feel, it's just co-worker. Uh, colleague sounds slightly more formal to me than co-worker. Somebody who you work with, or somebody who you have a business relationship with in some sense. Could be a person from another company, could be somebody from your own company. Anyone who you do business dealings with is your colleague, can be your colleague. In a sentence, I'm going to a networking event with my colleagues next week. Miscellaneous. That M-I-S-C, miscellaneous. It's just a, the spelling, I think, maybe is confusing for this word. Miscellaneous. Miscellaneous just means other stuff or just other uncategorized stuff. I keep a lot of miscellaneous items in a, a drawer in my house. Maybe they don't, they don't really fit into one category, like it's not kitchen things, it's not clothing. It's just sort of a mixture of, of things, miscellaneous things. Negotiation. The next word is negotiation. Negotiation. Yeah, there are two T's in this, but neither T is a hard T. They're both very soft, that sh, sh sound, because they're followed by the I and another vowel, the she, a negotiation. Negotiation refers to a compromise uh, between two people. You're trying to make a decision and you negotiate. In this case, it's the noun form negotiation. Business negotiations continued for more than a month with this important deal. Realm. 
Realm, I see why this one's hard. It's that realm part, the realm. It's a weird word, isn't it? It's used to talk about just like the kind of a fantasy world is sort of the nuance of this phrase, the realm. Uh, in a sentence, let us go to the realm where the elves live and eat their bread. Unfortunately. The next word is unfortunately, unfortunately, unfortunately. It just means too bad. Uh, you can use this to, to start bad news, for example, like, unfortunately, I can't come to work today because I'm sick, or unfortunately, I broke my arm at the basketball game last week, or unfortunately, my haircut is bad. Vocabulary. 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 Vocab vo vocabulary. 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 Vocabulary just refers to the uh, words in a language. My vocabulary in my second language is really, really low. I need a bigger vocabulary so that I can express myself more clearly. World. World. Ah, oh, I see why this one's hard. World, world, hard to pronounce. That R, L, D, I think, t uh, together is tough. Plus that W at the beginning as well. It's such a short word, but you have to say so many weird things at the same time. World. Your tongue is going blah, blah, like this. In a sentence, I have traveled all over the world and the best food is in my stomach. That's the end. So those were 10 hard to pronounce words. Give them a try slowly at first and just kind of try to work up to saying it at a more natural speed, if you like. Thank you so much for sharing your opinions with us on Facebook. Uh, and please make sure to subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss out on any of this fun information. So thanks again for watching today and we'll see you again next time. Bye! You don't need new shoes, you need new feet. A man and a woman are choosing a hotel. Which hotel are they going to choose? We have to decide on the hotel for our trip next month. Okay, let's check the internet. The Ocean Hotel is near the beach. It says $120 a night per person, and you get a buffet breakfast. How about the Pine Hotel? It's $80 a night. I don't want to waste too much on accommodations. Hmm, but the Pine Hotel is far from the beach and from downtown, and it says you have to pay for Wi-Fi. What about the Sunrise Hotel? It usually costs $140 a night, but now they're running a promotion and we can stay one night for $90. It's between the beach and downtown. Plus, it has free Wi-Fi. Sounds good. Oh, wait. It says the deal is for next week only. Oh, I didn't see that. So, how about this place, the Royal Hotel? It's located in the middle of downtown and it costs $100 a night. The room doesn't look so nice, but they have free Wi-Fi. Okay, let's book this hotel. Oh, it's already fully booked. Shoot. Then I think the first one is best. Is it full? No, it's not. Great. Which hotel are they going to choose? A man and a woman are choosing a hotel. Which hotel are they going to choose? We have to decide on the hotel for our trip next month. Okay, let's check the internet. The Ocean Hotel is near the beach. It says $120 a night per person, and you get a buffet breakfast. How about the Pine Hotel? It's $80 a night. I don't want to waste too much on accommodations. Hmm, but the Pine Hotel is far from the beach and from downtown, and it says you have to pay for Wi-Fi. What about the Sunrise Hotel? It usually costs $140 a night, but now they're running a promotion, and we can stay one night for $90. It's between the beach and downtown. Plus, it has free Wi-Fi. Sounds good. Oh, wait. It says the deal is for next week only. Oh, I didn't see that. So, how about this place, the Royal Hotel? It's located in the middle of downtown, and it costs $100 a night. The room doesn't look so nice, but they have free Wi-Fi. Okay, let's book this hotel. Oh, it's already fully booked. Shoot. Then I think the first one is best. Is it full? No, it's not. Great. A man and a woman are talking about the layout of a meeting room. How are they going to arrange the tables? Let's move the tables for tomorrow's meeting. All right. Shall we put all the tables in the center of the room so that everyone faces each other? Well, there's going to be a group session first, so let's separate the tables into four sections. 
four people will be seated in each group. Okay, and I'll put some pens and pads of paper on each table. Thank you. And we'll have a short presentation at the beginning of the session, so we need a projector here. All right. Also, we're going to use a whiteboard, aren't we? Is it okay if I put the whiteboard next to the screen? Well, how about putting the whiteboard at the other end of the room? That makes sense. After the meeting, we need to put everything back where it was, in four rows of two tables per row. How are they going to arrange the tables? A man and a woman are talking about the layout of a meeting room. How are they going to arrange the tables? Let's move the tables for tomorrow's meeting. All right. Shall we put all the tables in the center of the room so that everyone faces each other? Well, there's going to be a group session first, so let's separate the tables into four sections. Four people will be seated in each group. Okay. And I'll put some pens and pads of paper on each table. Thank you. And we'll have a short presentation at the beginning of the session, so we need a projector here. All right. Also, we're going to use a whiteboard, aren't we? Is it okay if I put the whiteboard next to the screen? Well, how about putting the whiteboard at the other end of the room? That makes sense. After the meeting, we need to put everything back where it was, in four rows of two tables per row. A man and a woman are talking about office supplies. What will the man order? Every month you need to check our office supplies and order any items that are running low. This time, let's take a look at them together. Here's the checklist. Okay, that sounds good. Well, starting with the paper, it looks like there's only one box left. We use lots of paper every day, so let's order two more boxes. Okay, the printer is out of color ink. Should we order that? We don't really print documents in color, so we don't need to worry about that. Hmm, okay. Looks like these whiteboard markers are running out of ink. Right. Those need to be replaced. We get a discount if we order them in sets of five, so let's do that. Okay. And while we're at it, can we order a mouse? Sometimes it works, but sometimes it doesn't. That's probably because it's running out of batteries. Let's check the stock of batteries and order more if we don't have many left. Sure. Well, we have three batteries here. You can take two of these for your mouse, but buy a six-pack of batteries to replace them. What will the man order? A man and a woman are talking about office supplies. What will the man order? Every month you need to check our office supplies and order any items that are running low. This time, let's take a look at them together. Here's the checklist. Okay, that sounds good. Well, starting with the paper, it looks like there's only one box left. We use lots of paper every day, so let's order two more boxes. Okay. The printer is out of color ink. Should we order that? We don't really print documents in color, so we don't need to worry about that. Hmm. Okay. Looks like these whiteboard markers are running out of ink. Right. Those need to be replaced. We get a discount if we order them in sets of five, so let's do that. Okay. And while we're at it, can we order a mouse? Sometimes it works, but sometimes it doesn't. That's probably because it's running out of batteries. Let's check the stock of batteries and order more if we don't have many left. Sure. Well, we have three batteries here. You can take two of these for your mouse, but buy a six-pack of batteries to replace them. A woman is asking for directions to the airport at an information center. How is she going to get to the airport? Excuse me, I need to go to the airport. Would you tell me how to get there? Sure, there are a few ways. If you take bus number one, it takes about one and a half hours to the airport. It's the least expensive way. Bus number two is a non-stop bus. It's more expensive and leaves once every hour, but it only takes 50 minutes. I see. What about taxis? There's a taxi stand in front of the building, and they take about an hour. But they use the expressway and charge extra for a lot of luggage, so it's going to be a lot more expensive than the bus. I guess that makes sense, and I'd like to avoid paying too much. You didn't by chance buy anything at Shopping World while you were here. They offer complimentary shuttle service to the airport for customers who make a purchase there. Wow, I didn't know that. I haven't bought anything yet, but I was going to stop by and get some souvenirs there anyway. Then you can use that. 
How is she going to get to the airport? A woman is asking for directions to the airport at an information center. How is she going to get to the airport? Excuse me, I need to go to the airport. Would you tell me how to get there? Sure, there are a few ways. If you take bus number one, it takes about one and a half hours to the airport. It's the least expensive way. Bus number two is a non stop bus. It's more expensive and leaves once every hour, but it only takes 50 minutes. I see. What about taxis? There's a taxi stand in front of the building, and they take about an hour. But they use the expressway and charge extra for a lot of luggage, so it's going to be a lot more expensive than the bus. I guess that makes sense, and I'd like to avoid paying too much. You didn't by chance buy anything at Shopping World while you were here. They offer complimentary shuttle service to the airport for customers who make a purchase there. Wow, I didn't know that. I haven't bought anything yet, but I was going to stop by and get some souvenirs there anyway. Then you can use that. A woman and a supplier are talking on the phone. What is the woman going to get for the sale? I need you to deliver some more sweaters in time for the sale next month. Okay, what do you need? We need a thousand of the small red sweaters and four hundred of the medium red sweaters. And we also need six hundred of the small green sweaters and two hundred of the medium green sweaters by the end of this month. Red and green sweaters. Actually, we're running low on green sweaters and we're waiting on some green yarn from our supplier. We'll get you started with the red sweaters, though. No, no, no. We need the red and green sweaters together. So please just get as many green sweaters ready as you can. Okay. I think we can get 200 of the green sweaters to you on time. Which size has higher priority? The small ones take priority. Sorry for such short notice, but we really need your help. All right. We'll do our best. We'll get those green sweaters to you along with all the red sweaters you ordered. What is the woman going to get for the sale? A woman and a supplier are talking on the phone. What is the woman going to get for the sale? I need you to deliver some more sweaters in time for the sale next month. Okay, what do you need? We need a thousand of the small red sweaters and four hundred of the medium red sweaters. And we also need 600 of the small green sweaters and 200 of the medium green sweaters by the end of this month. Red and green sweaters. Actually, we're running low on green sweaters and we're waiting on some green yarn from our supplier. We'll get you started with the red sweaters, though. No, no, no. We need the red and green sweaters together. So please just get as many green sweaters ready as you can. Okay. I think we can get 200 of the green sweaters to you on time. Which size has higher priority? The small ones take priority. Sorry for such short notice, but we really need your help. All right, we'll do our best. We'll get those green sweaters to you along with all the red sweaters you ordered. Want to speak real English from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at EnglishClass101.com. Hi, everybody. My name is Alicia, and today we're going to be talking about 10 phrases that you always want to hear. So let's begin. You win. The first phrase is you win. You win. If you hear the phrase you win, it means you have won something. You are probably going to receive something for free. Woo! That's a very happy thing, right? You want to get free things. Congratulations! You win a car! Yay! Here are the keys to your new car. Great, thank you! I brought you something special. This is exciting to hear because it means this little something special is like, oh, I thought only of you, so I brought you this. I brought you something special. Really? Thank you. Mm. I miss you. I miss you. I miss you is nice. You can use this with your friends, your family members, your partner, whoever. I miss you shows that you want to meet the other person. Probably you haven't, you haven't seen them as much as you would like to, so you can say, I miss you. I miss you. Call your husband or wife or boyfriend, girlfriend, whoever on the phone, maybe. You haven't seen them for a long time. You can say, I miss you. I miss you too. Take a break. I'll do the cleaning today.
take a break. I'll do the cleaning today. This means someone else is going to clean up your house for you or clean up something for you. I would be very happy to hear this phrase right now because my apartment is a disaster because I'm only there to sleep. <laughs> so maybe you've had a long day at work or a long day doing something. You come home and somebody else has offered to do this for you. So take a break. I'll do the cleaning today. And you can reply, really? Thank you so much. I'm going to relax. The budget is unlimited. The next phrase that you always want to hear is the budget is unlimited. The budget is unlimited. This could be at work. This could be a budget, a personal budget, maybe. But it just means there's no limit to the budget. You can spend as much money as you want. Woohoo! Very exciting. So let's see. In a business context, perhaps you have this new client who's going to give you a lot of money to build a new house or something. Maybe you're building houses. That's your project. Your boss comes to you. The budget for this project is unlimited. Really? Let's go crazy. Dun, dun, dun. There'll be a bonus at the end of the month. Yeah, this is a phrase that you probably are very excited to hear. It means you are going to receive extra money from your job at the end of the month. Woohoo! Very exciting. Extra money. Maybe you'll hear this from your boss or your manager or maybe your coworker at work. Or maybe you see it in an email. There'll be a bonus at the end of the month. Really? I'm going to use mine to buy a new car. Really? I'm going to use mine to go out on a date. Really? I'm going to use mine to get a new fish. You did a great job. You did a great job. You did a great job is something um, you'll probably hear from, well, I don't know, you could hear this from pretty much anybody. Anytime you've done a good job, someone will congratulate you or tell you their opinion with this phrase. You did a great job. You finished a project at work and your boss says, you did a great job. Nice. Thank you so much. It was really fun. Or thank you. Just, just say thank you. You look great today. You look great today. The other person thinks that your physical appearance is nice today. <laughs> Don't think about the today part, you know. Just, just, just take the compliment. Be like, oh, really? Thank you so much. You look great today. Oh, thank you so much. I got a new haircut. Thank you so much. I, I got enough sleep. Yeah. You were right. You were right. This means that um, something that you said in the past was correct. And it, everybody likes to be correct, I think. I saw that movie that you recommended. You were right. It was really good. Oh, good. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Don't be like, I know. Or, yeah, I knew I was right. Don't do that. Just say, oh, good. I'm glad. You're an excellent cook. You're an excellent cook. This is a nice compliment, especially for someone who enjoys cooking. If you say, you're an excellent cook, it means you enjoyed their food. So, let's see. At a dinner party, for example, you're an excellent cook. This food is delicious. Oh, thank you so much. I'm really glad you enjoyed it. And that's the end. So those are things that you want to hear. So keep in mind, it's nice for you to hear these things, but other people also want to hear them too. So compliment other people. Tell them that they are awesome if they're awesome. Tell them that they have good skills in whatever it is that they like to do. People like to be complimented. People want to be liked. So write them a message or say something nice to them. Yes, leave us a comment. We have a great team of people doing all these amazing things. So tell them how much you love them. So thanks so much for joining us for this week's lesson. We will see you again next time. Please make sure to subscribe if you have not already uh, so that you don't miss out on any fun stuff. Thank you very much again for watching and we'll see you again soon. Bye. <laughs> I guess I don't really need to do that. <gasps> I'm so sorry. Amped all the time. Japanese bug bath. A husband and a wife are looking at some floor plans. Which room are they going to see? How about this one? It's got a nice large living room. Hmm. I like a big living room, but I want the parking space. Let's see. How about this one? Yeah, that's nice. Should we go see this one? Wait a second. Isn't the closet a bit too small? Good point. Hmm, there doesn't seem to be one that's perfect. Wait, how about this one? It's got everything we need, doesn't it? And the closet is pretty large, too. Let's go see this one. Okay. Which room are they going to see? A husband and a wife are looking at some floor plans. Which room are they going to see? How about this one? It's got a nice large living room. Hmm. I like a big living room, but I want the parking space. Let's see. How about this one? Yeah, that's nice. Should we go see this one? 
Wait a second. Isn't the closet a bit too small? Good point. Hmm. There doesn't seem to be one that's perfect. Wait, how about this one? It's got everything we need, doesn't it? And the closet is pretty large, too. Let's go see this one. Okay. A man is making a reservation at a hotel. Which room is he going to stay in? Seaside Hotel, how may I help you? Hi. I'd like to stay for one night on September 22nd. Certainly. One night from September 22nd. How many people? Two. Would you like a smoking or a non smoking room, sir? Non smoking. The only non smoking room available on that day is a mountain view room. Is that okay? Well, I was hoping for an ocean view room. I'm sorry, but the only ocean view room available on that day is a smoking room. I see. Is there a non smoking ocean view room available on September 23rd? Yes, there is. Okay, we'll stay on September 23rd. Which room is he going to stay in? A man is making a reservation at a hotel. Which room is he going to stay in? Seaside Hotel, how may I help you? Hi. I'd like to stay for one night on September 22nd. Certainly. One night from September 22nd. How many people? Two. Would you like a smoking or a non smoking room, sir? Non smoking. The only non smoking room available on that day is a mountain view room. Is that okay? Well, I was hoping for an ocean view room. I'm sorry, but the only ocean view room available on that day is a smoking room. I see. Is there a non smoking ocean view room available on September 23rd? Yes, there is. Okay, we'll stay on September 23rd. A woman is talking to her hairstylist. How would she like to change her hair? Hi, may I help you? Hi, I've got a three o'clock reservation for Richie. Ah, yes, welcome, Miss Richie. Please come this way. What can I do for you today? I'd like to change my hairstyle a little bit. Okay. What length would you like? About shoulder length. All right. And what about your bangs? Keep the bangs. Straight down or parted on the side? To the side a bit. Which side? Maybe a little left from the middle? Got it. We'll start with the shampoo, so please come this way. How would she like to change her hair? A woman is talking to her hairstylist. How would she like to change her hair? Hi, may I help you? Hi, I've got a three o'clock reservation for Richie. Ah, yes, welcome, Miss Richie. Please come this way. What can I do for you today? I'd like to change my hairstyle a little bit. Okay, what length would you like? About shoulder length. All right, and what about your bangs? Keep the bangs. Straight down or parted on the side? To the side a bit. Which side? Maybe a little left from the middle? Got it. We'll start with the shampoo, so please come this way. A male and female student are looking at job advertisements. Which job is the female student going to apply for? Hey, what do you think about this job? The hourly pay is pretty high. Sure, the pay looks great, but could you really do a newspaper delivery route? Of course. I'm good at riding bikes, but I'm worried about waking up early. What about this one? The pay isn't as high, but you can work two or three days a week and start working from the evening. Oh, this one? A supermarket cashier, huh? Well, it would be good to work after school. This one for a coffee shop might be good too. Oh, yeah, I love that place, and it's on my way to school. Not bad, huh? Hmm, which one should I apply to? Which two is it between? The coffee shop and the newspaper delivery route? Yeah, the pay for the newspaper route is really nice. Okay, my mind's made up. I guess I'll just have to get up early. Which job is the female student going to apply for?
A male and female student are looking at job advertisements. Which job is the female student going to apply for? Hey, what do you think about this job? The hourly pay is pretty high. Sure, the pay looks great, but could you really do a newspaper delivery route? Of course, I'm good at riding bikes, but I'm worried about waking up early. What about this one? The pay isn't as high, but you can work two or three days a week and start working from the evening. Oh, this one? A supermarket cashier, huh? Well, it would be good to work after school. This one for a coffee shop might be good too. Oh, yeah, I love that place, and it's on my way to school. Not bad, huh? Hmm, which one should I apply to? Which two is it between? The coffee shop and the newspaper delivery route? Yeah, the pay for the newspaper route is really nice. Okay, my mind's made up. I guess I'll just have to get up early. A woman is trying on a dress and talking to a shop clerk. Which dress is she going to buy? It looks very nice on you, and it fits perfectly. Yeah, it fits, but I usually wear plain colors. I'm not used to this kind of a pattern. Well, I think you look great. Yeah? Still, it would take some courage for me to actually wear this. What about this dress then? The pattern is much more reserved, so it won't feel as flashy. You're right. Let me try that one on. Go right ahead. What do you think, ma'am? This one suits me much more than the last. Do you have a long sleeved version with this design? Yes, we do. Thanks. I'll buy that. Which dress is she going to buy? A woman is trying on a dress and talking to a shop clerk. Which dress is she going to buy? It looks very nice on you, and it fits perfectly. Yeah, it fits, but I usually wear plain colors. I'm not used to this kind of a pattern. Well, I think you look great. Yeah? Still, it would take some courage for me to actually wear this. What about this dress then? The pattern is much more reserved, so it won't feel as flashy. You're right. Let me try that one on. Go right ahead. What do you think, ma'am? This one suits me much more than the last. Do you have a long sleeved version with this design? Yes, we do. Thanks. I'll buy that. A woman is ordering a birthday cake. Which cake is she going to order? Excuse me, I'd like to order a birthday cake for my daughter. Great. Could you tell me what kind of cake you're looking for? My daughter likes chocolate, so I think a chocolate cream cake would be good. And can you put strawberries on it? Absolutely. We have round and square cakes. Which one would you prefer? Hmm. A round one, please. Okay. How old is your daughter going to be? She'll be 12. Okay, then we'll get 12 candles ready. Do you want to write a message? Yes. Please write happy birthday. All right. Do you want that written in pink? If so, we'll put it on a white plate. Otherwise, we can write it in white and put it on a pink plate. Please write it in pink and put it on a white plate. Which cake is she going to order? A woman is ordering a birthday cake. Which cake is she going to order? Excuse me, I'd like to order a birthday cake for my daughter. Great. Could you tell me what kind of cake you're looking for? My daughter likes chocolate, so I think a chocolate cream cake would be good. And can you put strawberries on it? Absolutely. We have round and square cakes. Which one would you prefer? Hmm. A round one, please. Okay. How old is your daughter going to be? She'll be 12. Okay, then we'll get 12 candles ready. Do you want to write a message? Yes. Please write happy birthday. All right. Do you want that written in pink? If so, we'll put it on a white plate. Otherwise, we can write it in white and put it on a pink plate. Please write it in pink and put it on a white plate. A man and a woman are discussing plans for their upcoming move. When are they going to move? 
I think we should decide on the moving date and call a moving company. Sounds good. I was just looking at some moving companies. I don't want to pay a lot of money. Definitely. This company here will give us a discount of 10% if we book at least one month before the moving day. One month before? Then we have to move after December 15th in order to get the discount. Yep, and there's an additional discount if we book on a weekday. A weekday? Well, I have a meeting that Monday morning, and the exhibition is on Tuesday and Wednesday, so. Friday would be good because we could then organize the new place over the weekend. Yeah, but wait a second. They say 15% off Monday to Thursday and 5% off on Friday. Well, what do you want to do? Let's go for the biggest discount. I'll be done with the exhibition by then anyway. When are they going to move? A man and a woman are discussing plans for their upcoming move. When are they going to move? I think we should decide on the moving date and call a moving company. Sounds good. I was just looking at some moving companies. I don't want to pay a lot of money. Definitely. This company here will give us a discount of 10% if we book at least one month before the moving day. One month before? Then we have to move after December 15th in order to get the discount. Yep, and there's an additional discount if we book on a weekday. A weekday? Well, I have a meeting that Monday morning, and the exhibition is on Tuesday and Wednesday, so. Friday would be good because we could then organize the new place over the weekend. Yeah, but wait a second. They say 15% off Monday to Thursday and 5% off on Friday. Well, what do you want to do? Let's go for the biggest discount. I'll be done with the exhibition by then anyway. Want to speed up your language learning? Take your very first lesson with us. You'll start speaking in minutes and master real conversations. Sign up for your free lifetime account. Just click the link in the description.